Ah, there we go. Now I believe everything is up and running. Welcome once again to Legends of the Drowned Isles, a 5th ed D&D homebrew campaign. Campaign 2, in fact, in this peculiar world of mine, called The Great Confusion. Well, the game is called The Great Confusion. The world is called Omasha. And I am called Mark the Encaffeinated One. I am the host and GM of this game. It is my pleasure to present to you the strange and weird thoughts in my head in game form. But playing also in this strange world are my players, starting on my left with Pat. Hi, my name is Pat. I am playing Silas Marsh, a uh, cultist. Hi, my name is Marie, and I am playing Annie, who is a uh, rogue fighter. And I'm next, and I play Medric, half orc cleric. And this odd bunch has been campaigning together for some time, trying to piece together the weird world that they find themselves in, the world of Amisha, going through some sort of crisis. The Great Confusion is its name, and they've got some idea what that great crisis is. There was a battle of sorts. That much is pretty clear, although the exact nature of that battle is still somewhat unknown. Medric himself seems to have served on one side or the other of the battle. It's hard to say. Uh, Annie was taking a stroll about, it seems, from home when her oh, ship went down. Definitely stroll. <laughs> uh, when her ship went down at sea, and Silas and his family fled their homeland to find a new place to set up shop and see if they can bring about the um, reveal of the mother the deity whom they are associated with and worship. But many strange things have happened since then, including the apparent rise of an ancient power, a lone Athlonian, whose name shall not be made, because it seems to cause strange things to happen in the world when it is. But Vaz McVazface. <laughs> Vaz McVazface. Uh, but whom seems to be reviving an old enmity, a curse against the gods, or a physical destruction of the things that they created. Um, in parallel with that, if you will, there seems to be an incredible instability in the world, which may be the result of a god having been partially removed from the world, which my players, having played in my previous game, know is Pluxia, who had been removed a thousand years before. Well, we're in the thousand years before. And the resulting pop-ups that keep happening with portal uh, 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 openings here and there are causing havoc over the town of Aelthvater, where all of, them, all of uh, the players have found themselves, including having opened up and released several odd beings who seem to be searching for something, and they grabbed a few somethings on their way out, including your Glomkin friend, uh, uh, Graveler, as well as a uh, humanoid friend, uh, Melora, both of which seem to have been taken to some mysterious plane. In the quest to try to retrieve them, you've also run across uh, Tassar, a strange... Uh, white-robed, pale-skinned old man with no time for anything who seems to be on a mission to help repair the world after the loss of the god. And your original contact through all of this, uh, a uh, gynosphinx named Cathron, also seemed to have vanished strangely while you were in a pocket dimension, and somehow having appeared there and then being taken through the holes forming when giant purple worms ate the universe. Besides that, you know, there's been a few other things that you've run into over time. The uh, beholder who seemed, beholder with a bow tie, it seems, I think it's important to remind you of that feature. Absolutely. Uh, Tauzek Ta Riva. Um, who initially seemed to be the host in that strange pocket house, uh, pocket domain, 
uh, now seems to be on his own quest to try to bring a god into the world as well, the god he knows as Oculon, the great watcher on the edge of reality. Ah, there we go. Just got to add a bow tie to him, and we'd be perfect. Missing a bow tie. Missing a bow tie. Aren't, aren't all the other beholders simply underdressed when compared to Tao Zek Riva? So basic. They're just also jealous. It's, it's, it's true. That's why they don't get along. It's all about fashion. Uh, however, having been initially uh, given a passage by Tassar to this small pocket dimension, which seems to have con contained the remnants of a stronghold from ancient Argenti Sagex, a, uh, a group that seemed to span the plains. He ran into Tauzek Riva, who said, after an attack, I need to protect myself and to, to also help you on your journeys. And he had a lead. So through the uh, upside down portal, if you will, the portal in the ceiling, you climbed out into what looked like some sort of Valley of Stone, made your way along the Valley of Stone, uh, facing off against numerous dangers, including rocks that seemed to sense and dislike the presence of living beings, uh, as well as a nasty uh, storm of sand and cold, Found, finding another uh, desiccated body of a, an Argente Sagex person, uh, along with a companion, Gosh, who is a Nothic under the auspices of Tauzek Riva, passing by a nest of large and yet still somehow childlike baby worms, the likes of which you saw floating above you and eating the sky. But after getting through all of that, you made your way to a, a for lack of a better term, manhole cover with the, uh, I believe it's the, um, I'm trying to remember which kind of eye. I think it is the cunning eye logo of uh, the Argenti Segex. The destination, so far as you knew, of where you would find some artifact to be recovered. Something that would be helpful to Tauzek Riva and ultimately also helpful to yourselves. Along with Dudek, Dudek uh, uh, Bitterhorn? It is Bitterhorn, isn't it? I'll call him Dudek for now until I remember properly. Yeah, it is Bitterhorn. Uh, Professor, a, uh, Professor Bitterhorn. A, a dwarven researcher who also seems to be following the path of Argenti Sagex. Kind of a little bit of a wannabe. You know, he wears a ring of theirs that he found, which is how you initially connected He's a fanboy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he Let's does be have, real here. He did, he did find a major artifact, the orrery you had, had looked at before. Um, which seemed to be some sort of predictable um, planar mapping system, something like that, uh, over time. So you could even see where the planes were relative to each other once upon a time. So this, this academic has come with you and somehow survived so far. But now you find yourself, and I'm going to switch over to the map because it's going to be a little easier for all of us to see that feature from there. If you're not in Roll20 gang, please... Sign in. You find yourselves in a train. I actually remembered. You're... What's that? I actually remembered. <laughs> Fair enough. You find yourselves in a triangular room, having come through a tunnel that initially went downward and then seemed to fall outward. That is, in from the perspective of this map, the south wall. The ground seems to be uh, loose stone uh, over packed dirt. Uh, along the, in this triangular wall, the two walls opposite you um, seem uh, meet at a point which seems to be a glowing pillar with some sigils surrounding it. Um, looking at the, two, at the walls, please ignore the English for the moment, but you do notice what looks to be Argenti Segex writing, as well as some sort of pictograms uh, on the wall. And in, as you kind of wander around the room, you notice a couple of other features, um, one of which is behind you on the wall you just came in. Uh, there is a, let me see if I can get this to show up properly, what looks to be uh, multiple 
uh, cup-like structures made out of stone attached to the wall. And in fact, in one of them, uh, I've got to make sure I know which one this is in. Um, in the last one, you see there is indeed an object. It looks like a glowing stone that is actually sitting in the last position. Um, across the room, you can also see embedded into the floor what looks like a sort of slot, um, but you can decide who wants to look at what to find more detail. Uh, Dudek is looking around and actually looking at the walls uh, with some, uh, some uh, incredulous looks. Oh, and I should say that Gosh is also taking a similar view of the other one. I recognize the writing. It is uh, ancient. Um, some of the Argenti Sagax uh, dialects, I suppose. They were strange. They came from multiple places, but yet came together with one functional language. It's quite, and he starts to get into this academic treatise on language change and the elements of it, and seems to be quite distracted by that. On the other hand, the your Nothic friend. And for those who don't know, and, and maybe my players need a refresher as well, a Nothic is a humanoid creature, um, but it has uh, a very gangly look in terms of its arms, which end in these nasty three-fingered claws. Its feet also are kind of in these three-fingered uh, arrangements. It has a broad uh, uh, mouth, which goes from the entire sides of their mouths and actually extends back to where we would normally associate ears as a bright, big, big wild smile. Uh, nasty, uh, sharp teeth on the front and one gigantic eye, which seems to glow very slightly in this space. Um, the big eye that when you find its gaze upon you gives you the shivers, uh, all except for any who they seem very fascinated by when in multiples, but you notice no particular effect from their gaze. Um, there is some indication that they are also telepathic, and I don't know if... Uh, yes, I think that Gosh has actually spoken to you in more imagery, uh, but did tell you that the fallen uh, Nothic that was seen before was, I believe, called Iktal. Uh, in the previous uh, encounter, you'd seen one dead one out by the other body. So, what would you like to look at first? And who wants to? I'd like to check out, is there, like, you said there's multiple, like, different languages or on the wall. Is there anything I can recognize, like, either basic or either common or orcish? Um, make a history check. Uh -oh. I have a sim I have a similar question, like because of what Dudek is saying, he's saying that it's a bunch of language that languages that kind of came together. Um I know common dwarvish, elvish, gnomish, halfling, and thieves can't. Um, is there any of those that seems to be kind of the root of it? I'll have you make Better a history check as well. You got eleven on the history check? Okay. Well, that's not orcish. <laughs> Twenty-two. Twenty-two, which is substantial. Um, you find that, um, first of all, you, you kind of look at it straight on, Medric, and while there's sort of a curve here and, a, and, a, and an angle there that you would associate with an orcish, uh, orcish scribing, um, the thing that strikes you more is that the carving of the words in the stone is more of an orcish style. Um, orcs have uh, the spines, which are these grand collections of knowledge. Uh, and the spines are carved into with pictographs and language, and in fact um, extend up uh, hundreds of feet. Uh, every time, every new year, there's more feet added onto this magnificent statue, which for some reason stands straight. It's hard to imagine <laughs> hundreds of feet, a stone just simply piled on top of each other. But they're carved in a way where they hold on. And one of the reasons that the orcs do this and have done this from as far as time goes back from the great, uh, the great upheaval um, 
is because it lasts. Every other form of knowledge is ephemeral. They laugh at people who use paper only because paper will be gone in a good rain or a simple fire um, where stone endures. So there's a sense not of the language itself, but of the idea that it was carved into the wall because they wanted it to last a long, long time. Okay. Um, it was not a casual scrawl or, or something like that. For you, Annie, as you hear um, the good professor drone on, which draws you back in some ways to the many, many lessons you would have had to endure uh, in your youth back at court, where they would have tried to drill into you the importance of all of these different things that are going on in the history of Amatia and the history of Alaria and the history of, of the family and all of these things, which, to be fair, given some things you've discovered over the last few weeks, there is a bit of question about that history. There is a bit of question about how how things have actually happened as you find some some questionable deals potentially made. But that being aside for the moment, what you see in here is indeed bits and pieces of the different languages you have known. Um, you do recognize, um, um, actually, the, the thieves' cant, weirdly enough, comes in because there's almost a double meaning to the way this is written. Um, you get the sense that this is as much a phrase that should challenge you as it is a phrase to read and understand in much the way that the, the, uh, the cant that you're aware of will do things like seem to have an innocuous symbol, but what they're really saying is this person leaves their back window open or have another innocuous symbol and say, this person has an extremely powerful magical uh, barrier warning, stay away, but it might look like a butterfly or it might look like, a, uh, a, a simple uh, angle that was that easily scraped but looks like it was accidentally created. The other mm-hmm. thing is the, the combination of languages here spans as much time as there is in the world. There's no one dominant language here. There's just multiples. Gosh looks at the wall and examines it and even walks up with his spindly limbs. And you realize that while Gosh seems to only be about four feet tall, it's because his back is bent over and his legs are folded and his arms are kind of curled in towards himself. But when he extends himself up, he can reach almost eight feet tall and kind of brushes his hands. The words themselves are about seven feet on the, on the, on the wall so he can easily rub his hands across them and feel them out. He looks over first at Annie, because uh, she seems to be paying attention at a distance. But, um, Annie, what's your passive insight? Mm-hmm. If you know. It'd be just 10 plus your insight. Insight is... So it would be 11. 11? Yeah. There's a look that crosses its face, but it doesn't quite register for you. Uh, and then it looks over towards Medric, and in your mind, Medric, um, you hear it kind of as it's rubbing its fingers across the, the wall. You hear mm-hmm. the words, in your heart, in this strange sort of lilting, telepathic, non-natural voice. Below the words, too, you see what are much more easily recognizable as symbols. Uh, In this case, what look like simple open boxes, you might say. And on the other side, it looks like um, open triangles. Gosh moves to the other side of the wall and does a similar action there, running his hand across it. Dudek is in full bore right now, and I mean that in both senses of full bore. He's gone very academic, uh, but he stops after a moment with an expression on his face of kind of amazement. I believe our friend here is telling me this says, in your mind, and the other one is in your heart. How extraordinary. Mm. You can take a closer look at the walls, or you can take a little closer look at that gap in the front or the pillar itself. 
What would you like? You to said there's symbols underneath the the phrases in your heart and in your mind. That's right. And if you okay. if you look on roll twenty, you'll actually see um, what look like upside down triangles on the one side, or upside down, I guess, open triangles, and kind of open boxes on the other. Gotcha. Okay, so it's not not it's not like a complicated symbol or anything. No. Very, very yeah. simple symbols compared to the language up top. I've written in English because it's easier to see it that way. Uh, but the explanation is that whenever you see English, it is actually Gosh who is translating for you. Okay. So we don't actually see it until Gosh says it. You see the symbols, but you don't know what they mean. Okay. But now he's translated. Um. So you said that these back here, they're like, receptacles and one of them has something in it uh at the very back yes the stuff down there so you see numerous uh um kind of looks like made out of stone embedded into the wall or 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 at least somehow connected to the wall looks like what looks like four cups and in the okay. last cup there is a, a fist sized um looks like kind of gray and black stone that is a slight glow from within. Um, uh, if we pick that up, is a trap gun explode in our faces? Who are you asking? <laughs> kind of like the room in general, but more mainly towards Annie. Because <laughs> she's the one who knows more about traps. I mean, I can take a look and see if, if anything looks trapped to me, but the RG Ar the Argenti Sygax tend to be much more on the magical end of traps than the physical end of traps from what I've seen. Yeah, I suppose. So I can see what I can see, but it might not be as effective. I know my to, limitations. If you want to take and a I'm closer assuming. look, you can look at it with a uh, little investigation check. Spend some time taking a look at it. What's Silas up to? Stylus is going to turn on his magic site and look for magic. Okay. Um, 18. Does not seem to be any connected mechanism. It's not weighting anything down. There's nothing in the other spots as well. If there is anything connected here, it would be magical and you wouldn't see it. Um, but It's for, not physically trapped. For Silas, um, you do... Uh, make out a sort of divination magic associated with the cups themselves that are hung on the wall as you look around. Um, the stone itself does give off magic, but um, it would be best to describe it as elemental magic, and it feels like emptiness. Um, it feels like almost an absence of magic or an absence of life. It's got a kind of very... If you were looking at it with the magic sight, which most times the magic will glow slightly blue and then have the flares of different color off for the different kinds of magic, this one is almost the inverse, where it's kind of got that slight blue glow, but it's more like the the uh, magic is flowing into it rather than out of it. Um, mm -hmm. Aside from that, the walls do not appear to be magical. Um, there is a slight magical glow that seems to emit from the uh, slot you see in the floor. Um, and a slight magical glow coming from the pillar that's in the center of the, uh, or in the, the apex of the triangle. Um, that seems to be divination magic. Actually, For divination both and evocation. Is the slot divination and the, the apex is uh, evocation? Um, the apex itself is both divination and evocation. The slot is, um, let's say evocation, evocation and conjuration kind of combined. Okay. Uh, it, you can't it see looks much like, from, unless you take a closer look at it, but yeah, uh, Silas will tell the others, it looks like those cups have divination magic, so maybe they're supposed to detect what's put in them. This looks like a puzzle room. Um, 
He said that slot in the floor is evocation and conjuration magic. And at the far end, that section has divination and evocation. So maybe they emit stuff, and if we get the... If we put the wrong stuff in the cups, something happens. I don't know. Um, and you did. Was there anything on like this pillar? Uh, taking a closer look. Yeah. Um, it appears to be a series of pictograms. Um, rather than a language itself, it seems to be uh, image portraits that are uh, representing individual scenes or individual people. Um, none of them seem particularly familiar. There are scenes, uh, from what you can see about, about uh, uh, I think you can really only see two scenes from that angle. Um, it appears to be uh, someone who has climbed a mountain. Uh, there's a mountain sort of in a, in a cartoonish version of a person. Uh, and there seems to be uh, someone on a facing hill, not a mountain, who is holding their hand up as if looking off in the distance, as if shading their eyes to look in the distance. Um, they're very stylized, and it's not hard to associate the similar sort of, of um, um, clever eye motif that they use and kind of extrapolate from that to recognize it as Argente Sagak's design, but there's definitely an individual that's right at work here. It's more, okay. more complicated in the image than you'd seen before. And there doesn't seem, at a glance, to be anything else loose in the room. Like, there is not anything obvious that needs to be placed into to these open, all of these openings. Nothing seems to be of that size. You could pr probably pry up some of the rocks that are mostly loose on the floor about that size. But none of them particularly stand out, and Silas has not noticed any of those emitting any sort of magical glow either. Um, why don't all three of you make an investigation room investigation check, or you can pair up so someone can get an advantage as you're looking around. Dudek has, has kind of pulled out a book and is starting to sketch down the the uh, the uh, uh, the words that he's seeing there, and he looks like he's gone into try, trying to do some linguistic analysis of them. Um, as well. So you said there's like a few rocks on the ground or something? The entire floor is covered with, with loose stone embedded in dirt. Okay, I'll, I'll pick up like a fist-sized stone and cast light. So it, it, I'm, I pretty much want to help somebody else make an investigation roll because my investigation is shit. <laughs> okay. Who would you like to help? Uh, any, mini money, mo, Silas. Okay, so Silas, you'll roll your investigation with advantage, and Annie okay. will roll her straight. And uh, something that I, I will mention to Dudek as he's trying to, like, understand linguistically, I'm like, it seems to be some sort of, like, um, m more of a cant than a language per se. It doesn't literally mean in your mind or in your heart. Fascinating. And yet our friend here can interpret it, I suppose by osmosis or something, having been around so much of this symbology before, perhaps. Interesting. Perhaps. It just reminds me so much of the, the cant that's used to leave messages around. Hmm. All right, so do we get some investigation rolls? Hey, Silas oh, is looking... Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Silas? Uh, Silas is looking specifically at the, the slot. Okay. All right. Um, both of you notice different things. Um, Silas with the, um, although the, uh, actually the brighter light coming from the stone that Medric is holding up will help. Even if you have dark, dark vision, it tends to, to make things a little, uh, more muddied and you're able to, to go, kind of gaze down in the, in the slot. And what you see about, about, uh, 
eight inches down. Um, what looks like a, a smooth section and then a stone, which seems to be sticking up about an inch or two. And after looking at it for a little while, you kind of imagine that the stone probably wasn't just a stone. It had a full length to it. And after a few more seconds, you realize that this is some sort of giant switch, that the handle of the switch is broken off and was meant to slide over to the other side. Does that make sense? Do you understand what I'm describing there? Yep. Okay. Um, for you, uh, Annie, as you're kind of looking at these, these walls and kind of looking around, you notice off to the left-hand side, right about here, um, there is... Right about where I saw, I saw the edge of the ping, but not the ping. Uh, yes. Can you not see the... No, I was writing when, when you pinged. Oh, and I sorry. looked up and the thing was gone. <laughs> it's just <laughs> a, it's just along the wall here, basically, a little okay. bit after the word mind. Okay. Um, you look over and you notice two things, actually, uh, as you're kind of looking around. One, there is almost imperceptible, lost in the design almost of these walls, there is a long, thin line between the words at the top and the symbol at the bottom. And that runs the entire length of the wall. And then when you look again, you realize that there's a, another line about two feet from the floor and another line about 12 feet up. The ceiling, by the way, is about 14 feet. Um, and then you kind of look at them again with that in mind and realize these are separate sections of the wall, almost as if it partially was meant to move. The other thing you notice, in contrast to that, crossing over this in sort of a T-shape uh, or a, a notch, if you will, is in fact what looks like a crevice uh, about half an inch wide. Um, and, it, and you kind of peer in a little bit and you can see that it goes about uh, six inches deep. And inside you see that a, a, a something shiny um, and then a slightly... Um, red colored jewel inset and then you sort of ponder that and realize it's like a rod it's like a, a, a metal rod has been inserted I tell and, where was that? and that's where that that uh, ping was okay okay I tell people to look out for a rod I think I've got a switch that has a broken part well, I think I found some sort of metal rod. Well, uh, is it something we can easily reach, or is it in farther? It's about six inches deep and only about a half an inch wide. So it's a little small for fingers. And there's even if you were to stick your fingers in there, you wouldn't be able to grab anything because you couldn't bend your fingers. Okay, mage hand. Okay. Does mage can mage hand squeeze into places? I think it can. I mean, it's not exactly a physical thing. It's just a a telekinesis illusion sort of thing. Sure. Okay. Uh, and how they do can, you want? Sorry. They can pull about ten pounds. So if it's heavier than that, it won't work. But okay. Um, make a. Oh, this is an odd one. Let's call this an arcana roll made with wisdom as you're trying to figure out how to maneuver the hand inside. I'll also explain that it looks like there's some sort of door that's supposed to open here. Yeah, that crack, by the way, is, is horizontal, so it runs from all the way from that apex all the way back out to the outer, outer edge. Okay. Um, so by the way, it start here, it runs all along here. And all the way in. 23. 23. Very nice. So as you maneuver this um, mage hand in, and it kind of sinks into the stone, and kind of probably does that weird cartoonish thing where it stretches out a little bit to fit into the stone, because it can't go through the stone. And kind of mm. winds in, finding, and you find yourself having to very carefully maneuver it to even get a a hair's width around whatever this thing is. 
and you finally get a hold of it and it can't seem to budget. It's not, in fact, moving at all. Mm. Well, I guess that's not it. Um, and you did notice that there seemed to be a <clears throat> jam at one end of that. Mm -hmm. Or one side, I guess, towards one end. Okay. Mm. Uh, Dudek seems to be talking to uh, Gosh. Gosh is not responding audibly, but it seems as though there's a conversation happening where you're only hearing half of it. Interesting. Our little friend here seems to indicate this is almost a prayer. Uh, a, 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 a mantra, if you will. But it's not complete. And you see this, this addition at the end, that means there's a continuation to be made. It's very strange. Now, mm. does Gosh know what, it, what, the continue, what, the, what the rest is? Well, yeah, and mm hmm, mm hmm. Right. Well, what? Right. Okay. Mm hmm. And again, you get that sort of one-sided conversation going on. Well, my little friend has a strange dialect. It's a little hard to interpret, but from what I understand, it's the form which tells him his, it's a prayer, not that it's a specific one that he's aware of. Um. So it is uh, about the way that the symbols are arranged, that addition at the very end, which indicates continuation, that sort of thing. So, uh, not really sure exactly what the full phrasing is, but this is not complete. And the continuation is across both walls, which means these are not part of, uh, or rather one would read this typically from top to bottom and then across. So these symbols on the bottom are definitely not language as such. So they would not continue it. Mm -hmm. Whoever noticed the lines on, on the wall, like the horizontal lines, did you point them out to, to everybody? Yes, I, I would have. Okay. That, that's what I mean, like something here is supposed to move like a some sort of hidden door or something. Yeah, it looks like there's a switch down here that needs to be pushed, but I mean, there if that's not the stone. rod for it, then I don't know. There is a nub of stone there that, that you could probably grab onto, but it would be tricky. Mm. How wide is the slot? Uh, about eight inches wide. And how deep is the uh, <laughs> the point? I think I said about, about eight inches deep to the, well, eight inches deep to the bottom, where the little nubbin is, is probably a couple of inches, only about six inches. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, Silas will just try to push it over. Okay. Have a, uh, a athletics check. Nineteen, nice. Um, you reach down in and grab a hold of it. It's a little bit awkward and definitely feels like it should have had more leverage, but you drag it over and you feel the whole thing start to tilt and then start to move very, very easily as you get about halfway over until it lands to the other side. The entire room begins to shake and the stone walls start to groan and, uh, 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 groan and strain. But then there's a sort of and the whole thing stops and the slot moves back or the lever in the slot moves back. Uh, so any, everybody can make a hmm, an appropriate roll. <laughs> oh, what uh, the hell is that roll? Yeah, no, what the hell is that roll? Let's call it... Um, uh, base would be perception, but if you have anything to deal with any sort of construction or machinery, um, for any, I would actually say that, 
uh, locksmithing or thieves uh, tools would actually thieves be tools? appropriate. Twenty-four okay. perception. 24. I will. I will do thieves tools then. Twenty-seven. Okay. And for Silas, I'm not going to beat a twenty-four perception. So <laughs> okay. Um. For Medric first. Um. You've been around a lot of military machines. They accompany you into the battlefield. Um, everything from boats to catapults. They all have a certain mechanical way of working. And they also have a mechanical way of sounding like they're not working. Uh, in particular, mm -hmm. catapults in the battlefield. If someone doesn't set it just right, the whole thing is going to catch up somewhere. It's going to fetch up somewhere. And to you, that, that kind of feels the same. Like some machine that was active, some some levers were active, and met up against a locking mechanism or met up against a uh, a restriction somehow. Something wasn't quite set, and it feels like something to do with the walls were supposed to move, but it was not unlocked. In okay. Annie's case, a different kind of perspective. Um, when you're picking locks you're feeling for resistance. And what you need to do is feel out that resistance and then put the smallest amount of pressure in the right places in order to unlock the lock. Uh, even though you're doing it blind sometimes, that's what you're going after. And this feels like when you try to turn too quickly on a lock that you've picked and you haven't quite got the last tumbler moved and the whole thing seizes up. Okay. I'll uh, go over the catapult analogy with the party. It's like the room is supposed to move, but we didn't do something right. Yeah, there's something still locking it in place. Yeah. Probably either the cups or that uh, rod in the slot. Hmm. Now, I've already been bitten by a rock today. <laughs> But I'm going to stick my hand and pick up the rock and put it into the one beside it. Okay. Um, trial and error. Trial and error. In fact, I think I have to do it with the master one. Uh, but you pick up the rock and put in the one next to it. And nothing seems to happen. When you touch the rock, it feels cold and fuzzy. Not in fuzzy as in It doesn't texture. explode. It doesn't explode. <laughs> but there's a sort of sense of of um, inward energy, much like what, what uh, Silas had described before when he looked at it and, it's, and it felt like the magical energy was inverted rather than coming out, it was going in. It, almost, it felt like that in your hand, where it felt like instead of, instead of a solid thing, it was always and forever falling in on itself. And yet... It, you held on to it, no problem. There was no, seemed to be no inverse reaction from the few seconds you held it. But nothing seems to happen. May need, it may me, yeah, that may need to be charged up. It's kind of like a hollow magic thing. But I don't know. Hmm. And Dudek will kind of walk over and take a closer look. Strange sort of magic. It is magical. It it is something of constructed magic. But I wonder if... I wonder if, like everything else here, it's more symbolic than it is uh, um, directly useful itself. I'm not sure exactly what it would symbolize as it is, but the absence of something, something's missing, I'm not sure. And he launches off into another debate or another discussion. Um... Mm -hmm. Finding himself with a, <laughs> I guess, an interested party, and Gosh keeps hanging around with them, and again, <laughs> there's that half-heard uh, conversation. Um, seems to be going on about, you know, minerals of, of the extra planar sense, and um, there is a sense that Gosh must be saying just enough to keep Dudek interested, but definitely Dudek isn't coming to conclusions anytime soon. What would you like to try next? Hmm. 
the magic stick the the glowstone that you've got in one of those slots. Let's see if that does something. All right, let one of the one of the slots on the wall that uh, has the crystal in it. All right, I'll stick the uh, glowing stone in the the other middle one, the one that the crystal is not currently in. Okay. Uh, it sits there and glows. Doesn't okay. seem to have any other effect. Try the one next yeah. to it. Uh, Probably actually, has to be a specific magic. There is an effect, sure. but maybe not the one you're looking for. In that the light, as it expands out from the stone, does seem to sort of dissipate into the blacker stone. There's no change in the blacker stone. It's, it's just like it's it's a magic flowing over it, and it seems to vanish. Weird. I'll try the other two slots in sequence. Okay. See if anything different happens. Nothing seems to be different there. Um, mm. You do get the sense that the stone that's there fits perfectly into the cup, whereas the other stones that you have are just kind of random stones and don't quite fit as well. <clears throat> hmm. And there's nothing in the actual, like, these things on the wall, right? Is that just a carving or is that, like, an actual opening in the wall? They're just carvings about a half an inch deep in most cases. They do look like they've been carefully and skillfully carved, but otherwise they are just just carvings. As you're kind of taking a walk back and forth along there, um, you kind of happen to glance back in that slot again and notice that, I don't know if the mage hand is still there, if you've bothered to keep it there or not. No, it only lasts for a little while. Okay. Um once again, the, the glint from that small um, gem on one side and one end of the rod facing outward uh, catches your eye. Hmm. Wait, was is it in the same orientation that it was a moment ago? Because I thought the gem was like on the far end. Like it there was is a the gem same in orientation. The that, that was not okay. meant to be different. Uh, in my description. Okay. Just wanted to make sure because it sounded like it had flipped over. <laughs> yeah, it has not moved. Um, hmm. I'm just trying to see if I have any. I'm going to move the hand back in and see if it's a push instead of a pull. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's a good idea. Um, you um, great... Before you push it. <laughs> okay. um, I'm, I'm just trying to see if I can reach it with anything that I have in the bag of holding. Hmm. Does it look like a rapier would fit into the hole? Um, depending on the style of rapier, I think it's a, a they're all thin enough. Mm -hmm. You're talking about the, the slot on the wall? Yeah, yep. like for, for me to try to basically like try to maneuver it like like Short person trying to reach something on top shelf, like. <laughs> um, yeah, I think you could. It would be at about, yeah, right around the, the seven foot mark is the middle of the line. So the lowest part is probably, you know, six and a half feet up. And the upper part is up, you know, above that. Okay. Six and a half to okay. seven and a half, if you will, if you want to put the two tops, two coordinates. Okay. But yeah, you could probably fish that in there. So, because I want, to, yeah, I want to try to do that before we push it further back. Okay. Give me, um, we call it a sleight of hand roll. And you're just trying to push on the rod itself or any particular target. Yeah, I'm just trying to, like, like I said, just like sharp person can barely reach, can touch with end of finger, get over here on top of shelf. Okay. That that is the vibe. Okay. I think twelve, <laughs> um, you're kind of it's frustrating you. But if there's anything we know about Annie, frustration just makes her work harder. <laughs> um so I have a feeling that after a while you're kind of more violently stabbing in than perhaps you needed to. <laughs> and as you do, two things sort of occur. One, there's a sort of mental shift in your head where you're going, wait. 
this rapier is kind of like a lock pick. And this is kind of like a lock. And then the tip of the rapier comes in contact with that gem. And you hear ever, ever so small click. No other visible effects, though. Um, with, with my arm like that, I'm like, try the thing again. Sure. Okay, you reach down and move the lever once more. Mm-hmm. Once more, the ground begins to rumble, and the walls begin to shake, and move. Whoa. The bottom half of the, of the walls moves counterclockwise and the top half moves clockwise now here's where you're going to have to make a decision as I will move these in a second because these are moving very quickly to the point where they seem like they're going to clear the room in one round you can choose to try to stay in this room you can try to go um, under them in either direction. Now, this is a split decision. You can... Hmm, how do I want to do this? Um, now, nah, I won't make it too hard on you. I was going to have you do a, a secret vote. So you get to choose which direction you're going and then that could potentially split the party. But that's that's not fun enough. So as, <laughs> as a party, I'll give you the opportunity to discuss this. Uh, That's and, right. <laughs> whether you want to try to go essentially under and over to get to the left-hand side or the right-hand side. As you, as you realize, it is opening up. And this, this scissor-like motion, if you don't move, is going to probably cut you in two. You'd Shit, have to crawl um... down to the two-foot level where there's nothing moving. To be a little more clear, the two five-foot sections are moving in opposite directions. The words are going uh, clockwise. The symbols are going counterclockwise. You can stay here. You can move to the left. Or you can move to the right. Or uh, we'll more follow towards. whichever one Andy does. Um, Whichever one is closest, because we don't have a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably... Annie's reaction is going to be like, duck, and I'm just going to stay where I am, because I don't know what's happening. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Silas flattens to the ground, then. All right. Th th that's Annie's first gut reaction. Can I get a... Uh, a, a I'm assuming that uh, Medrick is following suit. We're yeah, also I'm also have, flattening uh, to the ground. Dudek Just, and you know, Gosh actually, will, it's one of the bunch. <laughs> Dudek and, and Gosh will also stay there. Uh, I would like a dexterity saving throw then from all of you. 19. Nice. I was already on the ground operating the thing. That's true. You're 17. fine. And 17. Yeah, you guys are fine. I'm going to find uh, Dudek. Get down! Does that give them advantage if I scream, get down? <laughs> no, but Dudek starts voice. dancing. Dudek's okay. <laughs> Dudek's okay. Dudek got a 19. Uh, and... But gosh. I mean, a Annie's like, duck! <laughs> and... Quack. Yeah, yeah, 17. Where? <laughs> so, all of you drop to the floor as these massive stones move, uh, move just above you. Um, and I will make that happen. Let's see if so I we can just do the same thing again, then we'll be ready. Huh. Hey, the symbols are lining up. One second. There. Uh, as indeed, after all of this is happening, uh, I will have Annie make a perception check, because you're right up against the walls. So you have a chance to kind of glance onto what's happening to the left. But yes, indeed, the, the uh, symbols seem to be different when the walls are restored to where they were. Uh, and after a quick translation from Gosh on the left-hand side, the lower walls uh, uh, seem to say all is conquered. 
and on the right hand wall it is all is revealed and in the upper sides there is uh, a what looks like open triangles facing downward and open boxes facing downward on the right um, any as you're kind of desperately you know fl- flinging yourself to the ground you end up with getting my arm of, out from up here <laughs> yeah yeah it's all kind of uh, happening at once um, two things uh, you notice right away um, one the ground's very very hard uh, and two there's a flash of blue off to your left but it got obscured pretty quickly as the as the as the uh, stones uh, moved overhead um, when the stones movement stops you do notice however that metallic rod sitting beside you on the floor well we got the rod cool let's stick it in the thing we got the rod and we didn't get cut in half i I call that a victory so the rod itself is actually relatively thin. It's about a uh, half an inch in uh, diameter. It looks like a metallic rod, fairly simple in design. And indeed at one end, there is what looks to be a gem, which is partially embedded. Um, the lever on the, on the other hand is about two inches in diameter or would have been this, whatever extended up from it. Um, it seems to be broken off of the top. So it's a rough top surface place the rod next to it and nothing seems to happen mm. no i don't think this goes here and has anything changed with these down here nothing has changed there even though the walls were larger and kind of would have swept over that area doesn't seem to have affected them at all uh, maybe there are cutouts or channels or something or maybe it's magic maybe it's maybelline <laughs> I wasn't gonna say it. Throw back. <laughs> for, for a certain a certain generation might get that. Um Dudek has, has kind of wiped himself off. Well, this is different. All is conquered, all is revealed. Is that like an Argenti Sagax moto? I'll ask Dudek. Well very little directly exists based on them themselves there's lots of uh, legends and stories and so forth from what little bit i've been able to examine of that book there's more but nothing that seems to be this uh directly poetic and has this changed at all or no that has not changed Hmm. Well, I'm going to look for another similar lock. Okay. To see Um, if there's anything similar in this room. You do see on the two walls that have now replaced the left-hand side, there is indeed another one of those slots there. Okay. Exactly the same as you had seen in the previous one. So now that we know how this room moves... What would we like to do? Would we like to, when we figure out how to move these walls, stay in one place? Do we want to go to the next room? There was some sort of blue flash that I saw. But I don't know. I didn't see well. Well, we could was... maybe re- repeat the same thing over and over again until we see if there's all, if there's more messages. Like on, And I'll point to the messages on the walls. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, the whatever it is we're looking for is not likely in this room, so we probably should go check the other ones. Oh, yeah, but, like, the messages might be hints to something that you mm-hmm. guys can figure out. Mm-hmm. But if it's a loop, right, it's going to come back? Yeah. So the top one's going right. The bottom one's going to the left so if we follow go to the right we'll be following the shape following the what 
in, in this room right now. If we go to the left, we'd be following the shapes. If we go to the right, we'd be following the words. Okay. So if we... There might be different symbols on the, the this pole here. Like, on this part. That might be able to also answer. And there might be other things in the other side. Does that well, make if we sense? switch rooms, we should go the safest way, or, or the, the, the way that's easiest to pass. <laughs> I'm assuming, like, based on which way things are rotating, it's going to be easier to go one way versus the other way. Based on what happened, it's mostly a matter of timing. Um, you could either try to, like when the bottom one moves, it is creating a gap that you could hop into, but you have to do it fast enough so that you're not swept up by the other arm. Yeah. <laughs> you have a feeling that given that this is, seems to be solid stone, getting caught would be bad. Indeed it would. <laughs> Much as would be had. Mm. Well, the upper half is swinging like six feet off the ground, so I think Medrick's the only one that's in danger there. Yeah. I'm five well, I nine. could just duck a little bit, I guess. Yeah, I mean, one of these, it the wall section will be swinging into the next room, and we can just follow it. Okay. So whichever way the bottom goes, we could just follow that. Like scrunch down and... Yeah, like now hop that we've over already... the little two-foot section that doesn't move and into the next room. And now that we've already seen how it works, we should know exactly what to expect, right? If it Maybe. works the same, yes. All right. I'll give guidance to everybody, <laughs> <laughs> I including don't myself. I that's quite how that works. <laughs> what? I, I think it's concentration on, and you can yeah. only do it on one person. You can only do it on one person. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I'll, I'll give guidance to myself. <laughs> I guess like I'm one with like a zero, just plus, the, the plus zero dexterity modifier. Okay. Uh, I Not will. Not being but. <laughs> um, between Dudek and Gosh, which one seems the less dexterous? Um. Probably Dudek, although he seemed to be okay. able to. He clear seems this to be pretty, pretty well. nimble. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And my my brain doesn't have like Marie's brain doesn't have good memories. Is Silas very dexterous? No way. Um. Not particularly. Okay, so I will use my. Um, my ability to give advantage to to like basically time count up and try to time things. Okay. Um, it does move very, very quickly. Yep. So keep that in mind if you're deciding where you're going to be. Where do you want to be? I'll be uh, where we should be lined up on that wall, whatever wall is we're following. The bottom wall seems to be moving counterclockwise. The upper wall is moving clockwise. Okay, so then we would go right. So I'll line up against this wall. Um, we have advantage because we know what's coming. Silas, if you're triggering the switch, you can't really be against the wall, but you are fairly close to the wall at that point. Um, and I'm over here triggering it, so I guess me and Silas are in the worst spot because we have the least time out of. Yeah, it'll clear through those sections pretty quickly. Um, the you won't have advantage. It's kind of like trying to to uh, to catch water drops that are happening. You still know they're happening, even though it's not really making it any better. And knowing that they're happening, it's happening too quickly. Considering that it's basically sweeping through this room in less than six seconds. So, but you aren't being caught surprised anymore. So that makes the difficulty go down. Okay, that's good. 
Uh, all right, you set off the trigger. Let us see those yes. dexterity saving throw. Actually, sorry, it will be the same difficulty because you're not just trying to get out of the way. You're trying to climb over the wall. So it yeah. still will be so, a 17, I think it was last time. Also, if these are saves, uh, the uh, the assist and the guidance don't help. Yeah. Those only well, apply to skill checks. That's fair. That is fair. See if one of our friends will do it. So I have like an eighty-five percent chance of failing this, y'all. <laughs> oh, gosh is doing fine. Dudek fails. Boing, boing, boing. Metric fails. Okay. Ooh. It's not a one, so that's good. I'm pretty sure that Silas fails. Um, but yes, you grab a hold of the. Um... I I I count down before. Silly me trying to use one keyboard on the other thing. All right. Need to type with the right keys. There we go. Um, I forget even how to roll. Isn't that terrible? All right. All right. Those of you who got 17 or less... Take 10 points of bludgeoning damage as this massive Damn. thing catches you just at the wrong time. Uh, I will update the situation, however, as this one moves that way. This one moves, whoops. Now it's in the object layer. Moves that way. And I will move everybody over to the next area. Now, who failed? Everybody but Annie. Okay. Annie, you find yourself uh, reacting to the fact that there is no floor. Only floating oh, stones good. that seem to be there. Uh, the three... Uh, the Where did that go? <laughs> we, we lost our... Dudek. Our smart person. How did, I, where, how did I... What's going on here? <laughs> I don't know how... Oh. While we figure things out, do I have time to use the washroom real quick? Uh, go super quick. BRB. It will be super quick. All right. I must have... I must have grabbed him by mistake. and That's... <laughs> All right. Uh, let me see if I'm in the wrong layer. That's strange. <laughs> I don't know what happened to Dudek, so I'll find another Dudek. Uh... Okay, that was strange. But yes, um, <laughs> I'll, I'll wait in the full description before um, for uh, uh, Medrick to get back very shortly. There he is. I found a Dudek on another map and then brought him in. If we f if I find ourselves with two Dudeks, then I'll just quietly cancel out the clone um <laughs> yes as you um dive forward across the two foot um uh, wall into the other room just in time uh you do find yourself buffeted around by the uh, the wall it comes surprisingly quick up behind you pinches you then as you uh go over the other side you realize there's no ground here uh yeah. and indeed both uh, all four of you tumble down uh 10 feet and land on stones that are um, 
essentially in similar places, 10 feet down, you all take two points of bludgeoning damage as you fall. Whereas Annie finds herself just standing on solid stone, having sort of aimed a little bit better. Um, you do see another one of the uh, the switches, similar to what was in the other room. It is upside down and 10 feet up. It does not seem to be uh, held up by anything at all. Um, below what you, especially for those who fell, you see that another 10 feet, there are more stones. Another 10 feet, there are more stones after that. And it does not seem to end. It glows slightly greenish and black. Um and these stones seem to just float here, but they do look like they are broken and partially crumbling, as if they once were walkways. Um, once again... Uh, you find... On the far wall, there is a another one of those arrangements of, uh, of cups hung to the wall really okay. hard to get to from where you are you might be able to get there if you're standing on this far stone uh, and for the four who fell let's have perception checks in particular PCs I don't really want the NPCs to check out too many things they're checking themselves out at the moment perception 18 okay I need to update Bitterhorn who's seen better days and Gosh is not happy. Um, oh, as no. you are sitting down <coughs> on those stones, um, Medrick, you're kind of pushing yourself back up, and you see lodged on a stone about two um, layers lower, so about 20 feet away, is a stone similar to what you had seen in the other room, but it seems to be brown in nature so another large fist-sized crystal but it seems to have been uh two floors down from here all right um after a moment uh well it's up to you how you're going to get back but um dudek is looking up at the uh the words i can't quite make them out from here but i think i think gosh will take a closer look and you see gosh 10 feet below, kind of hopping up to look a little bit more detail. It doesn't look like they can reach or the uh, the platform above them to climb up. The one to our left says the doorway is open, and the one to the right says the knowledge blooms. All right. Now, you know, the crystal you mentioned. Rope? I do. Actually, let me just check. I keep forgetting Dudek's abilities. Uh, uh, you mentioned there was a brown crystal 20 feet below. Yes. Is it like in, in receptacles like the other one was? No, it's lying on the stone as if it fell there. Okay, I'll mention that to Silas. Who, uh, does Silas still have his mage hand up? Uh, it's a cantrip, so he just summons one and he can grab it. All right, so I'll point the crystal out to Silas and it's like, hey, there's a crystal down there. You might want to grab it magically with a hand. Okay, uh, first things first, uh, Silas reaches uh, into his backpack and grabs the big crystal that he's had since the last time we were in a crystal area and smashes it to heal us <coughs> because he's pretty beat up. Oh, shit. Okay. And then he'll mage hand the uh, one down below. Eh, 16 points. Nice. Uh, make a sleight of hand to to target that one. It seems to roll around a little bit on there. Um, yeah, he can do that. Eleven. All right. I do have fifty fifty for rope. Um, what are you going to tie it to? We're just trying. I'm to going. It it? I'm going to tie it around myself and sit down. <laughs> okay. Um, you uh, cast out the mage hand, it floats down, you're kind of trying to angle it properly because it's a little bit hard to see from this direction, um, and you make a grasp at it. It starts to roll off the edge of the stone, 
No. Uh, and you shift your hand just enough to hold it there. It's a loose grasp, but you did manage to catch it. Um, it is heavy, and the mage hand is... is uh, Actually, we're going to do up to 20 pounds. 10 pounds. Oh, yeah, it's not that heavy. Okay. Um, it, it is belaboring a little bit just because it's large and awkward, much larger than it, but no problem. You pull it back to yourself. Once again, it kind of glows with a bit of magical energy. Um, this one does not seem to have the inverse effect when it gets closer to you. Um, you have a rope. You have people who can climb. Let's get a climbing roll from, um, let's see, Silas, Dudek, Medric, and Gosh. I'll be last to go up because I can give like the other ones a boost if they need to. Okay. Acrobatics. And, and like I, like I said, I'm I'm doing the the most to give everyone the best chance of me not dropping the rope, which is I'm good at knots. I tie it tie it to myself, sit down. Yep. And you know you're you you've been good at climbing. I would imagine that you're probably also calling out like, okay, this is what you need to do. Uh, Timing people up. Which is also your special ability, right? Yes. So everybody would get advantage. Uh, Dudek will try to climb up. And guidance in sequence. Uh, well, Dudek rolled a natural 20, so he's nice. he's doing all right. Does he do a backflip? Um, not quite a backflip, but it, it is only upper hand, or using hands only, leaving his legs free. Um, gosh, not quite as effective. Um, gosh, probably because the, the, the sort of awkward claw-like fingers that it has, it's sort of grabbing around the rope and kind of pinching almost into itself. Uh, it doesn't complain. doesn't make any noise at all, in fact, which is still kind of creepy. Uh, but then kind of pops its hands oh, push up, him over up and gets in. Uh, no problem as Silas uh, shimmies up the rope as well. So you're now all on that next level. Now, if you all want to crowd onto the same one that Annie's I on, I haven't gone can. up yet. <laughs> oh, right, right. I didn't see all right, I'll give, I'm going to give myself guidance. All right, I got this. No problem. You do have advantage. Plus, okay. 19. There we go. 21 total. 21 total. So all of you kind of crowd onto that, that uh, well, you're all starting there because that's where you climbed up from. Uh, crowding onto that, but you can tell that this platform is starting to break apart. So you uh -oh. probably do want to move to different ones. Yes, yeah, I'm going. I'm going to usher people to go onto that one. At the very least, like to at least onto two, if not onto to three, and then we can go from there. Um, to go between those two, like this one that you're on now and this one, no problem. It's a mm -hmm. simple step. The other two are going to require a jump. Okay. Um, uh, so the one. lightest character goes next to me. <laughs> Because I am the heaviest character. <laughs> Dude, Dudek will make a jump of it. Um, lands heavily, um, kind of right on the edge, and scrambles up. Um, he will take <clears throat> two points of. Uh, I was going to say psychic damage, uh, of. Uh, bludgeoning damage essentially as he lands kind of hits the thing in his chest but he manages to hold on okay. um gosh will uh where are we here try something similar uh it does not have that so just straight up that yeah gosh is able to leap over without any difficulty to where medrick is silas I'll reach you, out to him you, you do notice that this platform seems to stabilize with two people on it uh, but you can choose to try to move somewhere else if you want no he'll stay in the corner that little projecting bit next to the lever i guess okay i'll look up is there is there a ceiling or are there just more platforms that go up forever it seems to be more platforms as you look up okay uh, as if it moves infinitely in both directions okay um, I would like. Oh, my camera is doing its thing again. Yeah, you're clearly lost in some strange, strange world. 
I don't know what's going on. If, if it continues, I might just turn off my camera for today. Um, okay. Uh, what is on this side of the pillar? On this side of the pillow, looking towards the middle, it's a little bit of a stretch this time to, 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 to look at it, so you take a few moments. Um, the, the image on the left appears to be that of a large set of double doors. Um, they look to be carved wood, and they are closed. On the right-hand side, there does appear to be a stone arch. Um, through which is a different landscape than what's in front of it. In front of it appears to be scrubland, and behind it seems to be mountains. You do see the lever there. It is weirdly hanging mid middle of the air, about 10 feet up. Uh, this one does seem to have the full um, shaft of the lever, and you notice that it's about about two and a half feet long, so it's not that far up to catch. Still, about seven feet from where you are. So a okay. five foot person stretching can reach it. Okay, so so I can reach it. Yeah, on your tiptoes. Which is, I'm five foot nine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no problem. It the the problem um, is more that there's an edge of the. Uh, of the stone mm -hmm. right there, so. Yeah. Um, okay. And does it look like there's any keyholes on the edge of, of this wall that I can see? Standing where you are right now, yes. You see that same sort of uh, crevice that crosses over bet between the upper and the lower. So it okay. seems like that's a common feature no matter what wall is facing there. I've got an idea, says Dudek. Let's see if his idea is smart enough. 16. I think the Argenti Sagex were masters of traveling throughout the multiple planes, but I'm starting to wonder if they're also masters of the planar powers themselves, or at least were. This room, these rooms, if this room represents the void, which is a peculiar space of no space, a legendary space that seems to be, um, well, made up of nothing, if you will, or, or all-consuming, there's various different descriptions of it, um, and the previous one was made up of earth, these might be representative of elemental states, of some kind. I haven't got much further than that, though. So this would be effectively a pocket dimension of some kind, manufactured specifically for this room. It was reasonable. Hmm. Okay, so do we want to try to get to, do, do we want to try to get to another side or do we want to stay in this one? What do we want to do? Well, this one seems to lead nowhere in both directions. Are there any more symbols like at upper or lower platforms, or is it just this one or this level that has symbols and stuff on the walls? Um, in fact, from the point of view below, there's just wall. There, there's nothing differentiating. In fact, it seems to, as it goes further and further down, or even when you look up, it's it's almost like a mirror illusion except it gets less and less detailed as it goes down, almost as though the, the stone is losing feature as it gets further away from this central point. Okay. I mean, I'd rather mm -hmm. leave this room before somebody falls forever to their death. Yeah. Uh... I'm not sure how to accomplish that. If one of us is here with this lever, how are we going to cross over to the next section up? Hmm. 
Hmm. We could go like one or two people at a time, maybe. You'd have to put the crystal in the right receptacle. Well, I don't know if the receptacle matters. I mean, we moved the crystal in the first one and it didn't seem to change anything. This one's charged, though. So let's try putting that in one of the receptacles. Okay, I'll hand it to Medrick. All right. It's a little awkward, but you are able to. And you, you notice that they're vertical Long in this arms. space, whereas it's horizontal in the other one. Okay. Where does it go? Uh, bottom one. Bottom one? Okay. Because it's place, the most accessible one. You place the crystal in there. It lands inside, nestles in. Doesn't seem to have any effect. And you said the last one was glowing, right? The well, this one was glowing, yeah. Well, the la the previous one was glowing, but like it sucked in magic. Okay. I don't know. I'll try the second one from the from the bottom. Okay. Um, it's a little little higher up, so you kind of uh, lean a little bit, pitch it into the spot. No effect. Can I reach the second one from the top? You can. It's about a stretch. You feel like the top one's going to be a bit of a of a of a, uh, a I don't know what's the term three pointer. You have to <laughs> kind of pitch it a little bit. Um, you put it in the one second of the top. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, it wobbles a little bit, settles in. No effect. Damn it. I mean, that's the, if they were the other orientation, that's the corresponding one to the one that we have out there in the other yeah. room right So now. there's only one left, but it's, I'd have to throw it and we, then we might, there, there might be a chance we lose the crystal if it falls. I, too. I don't know if it matters where they are in there. I mean, why would they have these if it's not having an effect on it? Maybe we just did something wrong. Anyway, I'll retrieve the crystal from the third one. Mm. I mean, that, that that comment goes both ways. Why would they have it if it does nothing? Yeah. Why would they have it there if it doesn't matter? They tend to be very intentional with what they do have. Yeah, I don't know. Could you... Uh, They're kind of insane. Could you use the mage hand to put the crystal in the top receptacle? Sure. I wouldn't say insane. Incomprehensible from our current point of view, perhaps. But they did wonders. That's what insanity is. Fair point. Um, yes, yeah, Silas can move over to that one. I think that will put him close enough he could put the one in the top with the mage hand. Okay. Seeing the instability of the, uh, of the stone's uh, Gosh will actually swap places with you to maintain that kind of balance. Uh, and use Mage Hand to put it in the top one gently. Yep. Okay. It settles into the cup. And after a second or two, begins to glow brightly. Hmm. Yeah. In fact, oh yeah. Oops. Okay, so there's more floor space on this side, and we know it's in the room to our left. So I think we have that glowing. Seems to be where it belongs. Mm. Um, we know what's in this room. Let's. <laughs> Let's um, do two groups going back to the other room. Yeah. Okay. Um, how about, let me see here. Um, 
I'm just trying to think because I'm the one who knows the pressure point to uh, for the lock. So I'm going to be in the second group that goes goes in back to the room that we were originally in. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Um, how about we do we get someone on to one of you two onto the rock here with Dudek and go back. You two go. You guys go back into the room. Me and there are you, Gosh, and Dudek go into that one, and Sounds then good, yeah. the rest of us go in a in a second wave. Yeah, I'll uh, stay to handle the thing because I'm lighter than Medric is. And I, how much of a jump is it to a Dudek's platform? From where you are, you can make it in a simple jump. And so. then have um, it when you guys are in the other room, you guys just go flat and stay in that room, and then yeah, sounds good. Over. Okay, I want to make sure I understand the plan. So, can you explain it to me like I'm a five year old? Two batches of people. Okay. Batch one goes in, lies flat. Goes in. To the room that we were in okay. originally. All right. Because we we can't all fit on this one to get to the other side okay that seems like way too much risk we can go here and then to the room after that if we need to okay and go go the other way um basically we're doing it into two groups because not all five of us can fit on these two platforms okay and who's on the first group I am I on it's... last group because I'm the one who has the pressure point to unlock the the mechanism. Yeah. If we can only put two people on a platform, then it should just be Dudek and Medrick on the first run through, and then Gosh can move over there, and then we can the three of us can go on the second one. Yeah. Okay. So how so, does this so plan we start? go. We go, me, Med, uh, me, Silas, and Gosh go flat on, on the first time we go through, and Dudek and Medrick jump over. And then on the second time, Gosh goes to where Dudek is, and then we trigger it, and the rest of us jump over. Okay. So what's the first step, then? I think you said so, something sure there's a countdown. The, you said something <laughs> yes. about the, the, the slot, I think? Yeah, so because yeah, wherever cause the lock said... is. Okay. Um, you poke around in that slot and discover there is no uh, no metal rod in that slot. Okay. Damn. And I hand given... her the one that uh, uh, I given... have that was. Uh, just to add on to that, given your experience with locks, um, the rod was the lock. With the rod in place, neither one would move. With the rod not being there, both of them can move. Okay. But it so does. This... Uh, um, I'll give you one more thing for free. And that's there may be a way that they can move together. Or you can prevent one from moving and let the other one move. Hmm. Like with most locks, the tumblers can be sometimes held in place to allow other tumblers to get there. That's how you line them all up to, to open a lock in the first place. Mm -hmm. If this whole thing is a lock, that might be necessary. But how to do that, that's something you have to figure out. Okay. I think I'll play around with that on the in the room that has the stable floor. Fair point. <laughs> <laughs> so who's hitting the switch? Me. Okay. Um, the others will have to make a, a dexterity saving throw. You will have to make one as well because you have to be able to reach up, hit the switch, and drop down in a very, very quick motion. The... Are you tall enough, uh, Silas, to reach it? I'm just going to mage hand the switch. Okay. I mean, unless it requires more than that. Nope, that makes it even easier. Okay. Because you don't have to okay. make the dexterity saving throw at that point because you're well out of the way. 
Well, then I will sw switch if, if there if me pressing into the lock isn't necessary, then I'll switch spots with Gosh. And then do deck metric and gosh go through first and then me and Silas go through the second wave. Okay. Sounds good. Oops. I just move something. So um I would say we do this and then we count a minute, gosh get what is written on those walls down, and then uh we'll we'll trigger it again. Okay. Each of you make, uh, let me see, gosh, I, just, I guess it's me mostly, and Medric uh, making <laughs> some dexterity saving throws. Uh, and, I, and I lay down on, on the stone that I'm on. Yeah. 13. Be is because you know it's coming and you have a space, it's easy enough to uh, to do that. Okay. Um, wow, another nat 20 from Dudek. Uh, however, uh, he is not quite so far well off um didn't hit a one so that's good <laughs> uh so i need to remember which screen i'm dealing with okay it is nasty is it 13 finished. high enough hmm 13 is, is high it 13 enough. yeah okay the eight is not uh, oh, no. unfortunately it is a very nasty knock and uh Gosh is looking rough uh, because he's gotten knocked around by these things twice. And you can see that he's kind of, um, one of his arms is a little bit out of joint, that sort of thing. Um, but I will move the two of you over there, three of you over there. And now I need to <coughs> uh, move that one this way. And then the other one goes... Gosh, gets seven hit point, seven hit points back. Oh, there we go. It's not much, but it's something. It is most definitely quite a bit, considering you just took nine, so that was pretty nasty for him. Um, you can, when you cast that healing spell on Gosh, mm -hmm. Gosh is looking up at you with that one big, normally baleful eye. And there's sort of a little bit of, of almost mistiness to the eye, and he kind of blinks Aww. slowly, uh, as if kind of surprised that you would take that that time. Um, well, yeah, like, oh, to die. Uh, nobody's I, ever I, done I, anything I, nice for there gosh. There we go. I put oh. the eyeball on the edge. You can see both rooms. So within the other room, um, you do not know what those two sets of phrases mean. So those of you in the void room do not know what the two ones are, are saying. Um, however, Gosh will quickly translate for this room uh, and say that on the left-hand wall it says the doorway is open, and on the right-hand wall it says the knowledge blooms. And now I'm assuming you're going to do the same sort of thing to move yourselves over. Is that true? I'll jump back onto this one. And I'll make sure I'm laying on the ground and remind everybody else to also be laying on the ground. Um, so, so I count a minute and then okay, yeah. do it again. Once yep. the walls have sealed up again, you hear nothing from the other side. So shouting wouldn't do it. You've made a prearranged sort of signal to not be count there. Count to 60. <laughs> um, yeah. Is that 60, 60 in Elven or in Dwarven? It takes longer in Dwarven. <laughs> um, you make the signal I'm going to assume the signal works or you make the, the timing that works out well enough so dexterity saving throw is from uh, Silas and from uh, Annie hard time braining there for a moment uh, that's water that's not supposed to be on the keyboard stop that oh no I don't think it's much it's not smoking anyway so <laughs> we'll just assume it's, it's just a flesh wound <laughs> just a flesh wound alright I am going to move my water though so Annie has no problem whatsoever and dives over the other side um, Silas however is slightly caught um, thankfully there's a lower DC at this point you only take one point of bludgeoning damage 
Oof. To move you move over. I will once more switch those and switch those. So once once more you're now seeing the familiar in your mind. Whoops, I didn't want to do that. I grab the walls. I hate when I grab the walls. I wanted to grab the eyeball. Uh, once more, you see on the left-hand side, in your mind and in your heart. You do also recognize the symbols below. You may have noticed them before uh, on the upper ones, but now you recognize what I believe are the same symbols you've seen the first time you came into this room. Yes. Or at least they yeah. seem they seem like the same symbols. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it's been gone through four times, so it's exactly the same. That's if it works logically, which it's hard not to when you're dealing with machines to do maps. <laughs> um, so what would you like to do now? Okay, so there's now in – I'm calling this room one and the room that we were in room two because that's the second room we were into. There's logic to it. Yeah. <laughs> so in room two, there's now a glowing stone on the top – of the cups. Can we put the stone in this room in the different cups to see if it reacts differently to any of the here? Because it didn't react to the first one differently than it was to the second one, but we didn't try the other two. We could. Yep. It's easy enough. It's they're horizontal, so boop, boop, boop. And we don't risk like losing the gem forever. <laughs> Uh, I had left the gem in that position, but I think you guys, did you take the gem with you before? You can take it now. No, nope. so. no, we left it there. Okay. Um, so now what are you doing with it? Sorry. I, I... Ba basically, we never put it in this one or this one. So we're going to try that first before we leave this room again. Okay. You move it over to that one next to it. No reaction. And over the next one over, no reaction. Okay. I think it might need to be charged. Okay. How do you now, suppose we charge it then? We cast our magic energy into it. Mm. Intriguing. Anything in particular? I mean, Medric, that light spell that you cast on the other, the, the mundane stone. Okay. I'll pick up a stone again, cast light. I, I'm meaning to cast it onto this. Oh, mm. sure. I'll pick up Antrick the crystal. might not be enough, but we can see what happens. Annie doesn't magic. <laughs> <laughs> so, Medric, you cast light on the the black stone? Yeah, I'll hold it in my hand and cast light, okay. put it back. Um, as you cast the spell, the magic releases and whew, seems to be absorbed by the stone. Nice. No visible effect, however. Less nice. Now, I think it needs to be a stronger magic. Uh, well, Silas hates to do this, but hopefully we get a rest at some point soon. How, how powerful a magic are you talking about, my friend? Um, Silas will go over... Silas will go over and... Sorry? I do have some magical reserves. I have not much to do in fighting, but I do have some magics. Uh, I mean, I can get mine back easier than most, I think. So Silas will walk up and uh, basically will cast a level five slot into it. Uh, if it okay. needs to be a specific thing... Um, I don't think which one actually can be upgraded. Uh, yeah, he'll cast a level five invisibility spell into it. That's what the safest thing I can do. Then we can't find it anymore. Um, you feel the magic release, and again, much like what uh, you saw with Medric's spell. 
it appears as though as soon as the magic comes in contact with it, the magic simply vanishes, and there is no change in the stone. Mm. Uh, make an arcana check. Twenty-three. Based on the way you had seen the magical aura of it before and the way that it's reacting when magic is in its presence, you actually start to realize that maybe it is glowing already. It's glowing in reverse. So instead of emitting light, it absorbs light and magic and other things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I already got that. So it being charged is effectively what it already is. Okay, never mind then. Silas will take his position by the uh, switch. So I want to try some. I want to try to, like you were kind of hinting at, jam one of the sides. Okay. So with the lever that popped out when we when the thing first moved over mm -hmm. I want to see if because there are two holes right you said or is it just the one you mean the the crevice where the the thing was you mean yeah um it's it's a crevice that's in both pieces so it spans across okay. both pieces okay so if I put it like into just the bottom one. Okay, like you mean like jam it in there? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Do we want to do it when we have words on the bottom or words on the top? If I jam the bottom one. This is me asking the magic people. I don't know. Do we I have don't know what any of them do, so. I'll have Annie make an intelligence check. Actually, if you, yeah, Thieves Tools are, would work over here as well, so it can become a, a proficiency check. I think we're still missing some words. Uh, 15? Mm -hmm. Um... Silas had tried to retrieve this rod before. He couldn't budge mm -hmm. it. He managed to wrap the magic hand around it, but it wouldn't budge at all. As soon as you had poked at it and pressed on that gem on one end, it came out mm -hmm. easily. Use that information as you will. Hmm. If I poke the the top of it now, like if I put it in into the bottom socket and poke it, can I take it out again? Okay, so you jam it into the the lower part of the crevice. And yeah. Then... J gem towards me. Okay, and then poke at the gem. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, I try to pull it out out of place again. You find that the rod does not move at all. No matter how much pressure you put on it. <laughs> Immovable rod. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in Legends and Lore, there's such a thing known as an immovable rod. <laughs> um. So, do we want to try to cycle through the bottom part, or do we want to try to cycle through the top part? Well, can we move just one at a time? I mean, cycling through the top would be safer. Like having the top move, I mean. Then we can just duck down and not be crushed by the bottom. That's what I wanted to try. Do I know for sure? No. But it was at an angle when, when I first had it, so it was blocking both of them when I first saw it, right? 
And that was just after they tr tried the lever, and while they shook and, and, and uh, made lots of noise, they did not move. Yeah. So if I put it so that it's blocking only one. Okay. Then it should, in theory, only move one. So I am going to put it onto the so that it blocks the bottom one. Okay. And then lay flat and go from there. All right. With mage hand or even just a hand reached into the uh, the lever in the floor, you can easily trigger the the device. Um, there is a loud groaning sound as whatever mechanism is there seems to try to move the bottom piece, but does not move the bottom piece. In fact, it stays quite still, but there is that rapid whooshing sound overhead as, and I'm assuming everybody else was told to duck as well. Yes. <laughs> uh, as the, uh, as the uh, upper part does indeed continue to move. And now bringing together Words on top and words on bottom, which you now recognize. Actually, I think the bottom ones needed to be translated. The bottom ones, all is conquered, all is revealed. Forming on the left-hand side, a paragraph, in your mind, all is conquered. On the right-hand side, in your heart, all is revealed. me two seconds and once the rumbling comes to us to a stop and you're kind of examining this probably congratulating yourself on having figured out something here you hear a voice deep resonant growling coming from nowhere and everywhere at once <clears throat> who are you and why do you dare disturb my tomb i think in particular gosh looks around with some alarm trying to figure out where this came from. Dudek looks intrigued and a little bit alarmed. How about the rest of you? I'm a bit startled. Annie doesn't usually break into things, so she's like... Uh, we didn't know this was a tomb. We're just looking for our friends. I think a few seconds later... Your friends are not here. Leave. To How Zach Riva intends, on us, uh, intends for us to take something from you, what could that be? What do you search for? We search for lost allies. What Tauzek Weaver searches for, I am uncertain. Knowledge, I seek knowledge, says Dudek rather hurriedly. And kind of looks over at uh, at Annie and uh, Medric as if sort of like, we should probably say something. In fact, he probably does mutter that. I seek answers. Like why? Why after we've triggered this so many times are you talking now? Yeah, who are you, by the way? And we don't seek a fight. We just, we're just wondering. I defend this place against those who would steal. What 
Why do you feel you have the right to be here? Well, it was really stormy outside, and we were going to die if we stayed out there, so we went in here. No response to that. Because we apparently need to be here to find our friends. That is all. Or maybe you can teach us, or you can show us how to get to our friends if we describe them. Or if we describe where, where we think they are. Why do you think I can help you find your friends? Well, they're on a different plane. And this place seems to be uh, in tune with like a bunch of different other planes. I'm not an arcane person, but uh, it seems like this place might allow us to travel through planes or to different planes, whatever. And you kind of realize that all of you understand what's being said. You're not entirely sure what language it is, though. The Beholder must have had some reason for sending us here. That, in turn, can theoretically lead us to our friends. That is the only reason we are here. Is Andy going to pitch in? Um, I am, however... Brain was also processing something at the same time. That's fair. Um, <laughs> I am going to pitch in that, and I'm going to be saying this part in Elven. Um, we just we we know this place is in, is involving the Argenti Cygax, and that. They have something to do with plane. They, they have knowledge about planar travel, and that is what we search. And that is what, what is needed for us to find our friends. The Argentis Sagax are no more, and their name has fallen. Do you still seek them? Silas will hold up his ring and say, we have found one and remnants of equipment from others. They are not dead, although they are perhaps in hiding. I think Dudek will also hold up his ring. Your, your names may be lost, but we still seek them out. The great works that you did, the powers that you wielded. So this is going to be a mechanically a group persuasion check. Not, uh, Gosh will not be participating because he has no vocalization and he can't really see anybody to talk to. Um, if there are additional spells or things like that you'd like to throw into this, keeping in mind that you cannot see a target. So any spell that needs to target something will not work, but there are spells to help improve yourself. Or if there's something else you want to do, <coughs> consider that this is, and I'm not going to role play it in real time because I don't, I don't have enough gas for that, but um, consider the sort of tone that's been set up like about this challenge that this creature is there. And I would say that if you have, if you have, uh, um, if you want to describe or if you want to vocalize, um, what the argument is that follows along with your persuasion role, um, if it is a really good argument, I'd be tempted to give advantage. Um, alternatively, um, the way that Annie's ability works, 
you can actually support someone else's argument and give them advantage, or you can choose to support your own argument. Um, who's been the one who's been struggling the most so far? In what sense? Like, who's the one who's stumbling over their words and thinking? But, like, so far in this interaction. Hmm. I think well, Medrick just it. wants to yell. It's like, I'm just here after my friends got damned. <laughs> um, probably the shortest patience award. Uh, yes. <laughs> I will give Medrick advantage then. Okay. If someone um, wants to make an insight check, I would allow that to kind of understand the responses that are coming back. All right. We make, can I make one now or no? Yep. Or after? Essentially, this ah, is a, way to go? A, a longer dialogue that we are shortening a little bit here. Okay. Inside. Oh, I got plus nine. Okay. Fuck, I was rolling plus five before. Wow. Thirteen. Okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Making it harder. I got plus nine. <laughs> Make it harder on yourself, but yeah. Um, so you start to think back a little bit across the conversation, uh, Medric, and there is a challenging tone to what the voice is saying. Um, there's a protective tone where it has called itself a defender, it has kind of uh, uh, questioned what right you might have to be here You're challenging what you feel like your your value or your worth of whatever's being defended um and you kind of get that feeling like i'm trying to think of a good military analogy in this case but probably more of the church um the devotion that you have to show to ignis mm -hmm. has to be total because of ignis um, and you are often tested on your faith. And to a certain degree, there's a, an element of being tested on your faith here. So it's not just a, a, a logical argument. It's not even if you have a good reason. It's are you good enough? And do you have the, the, how do I say it? Are you, it's, are you worthy? I guess is what the challenge feels more like. Are you worthy of the information here? Right. Okay. And for 13, I'll, I'll say there's also a little bit of an undercurrent of burden, as in, are you finally the people who are worthy? Which is also kind of an undercurrent of threat, I suppose. All right. So, who's got a... Uh, a persuasive line or a persuasion role they want to make. My my comment on why why suddenly he's making himself known now, where we've already been flipping these switches and and going through the motions for so long at this point, um, as well as. We're, we're looking for inf information. We're trying to figure out where our friends are and get the information that we need. And that's why why we're here. We're not leaving. I'm not leaving with, without that information uh, is kind of the line that I'm going. Like, what, what makes you think they, they are going to stop us if, if suddenly now we're a threat now after all of this time of us already being here? Okay. I'll have you make an insight check as a different target, but it's an, it might reveal something interesting. Oof, dirty 20. Nice. As you're kind of contemplating this uh, and, and forming your, your argument, forming your defense, forming your, your, your aggression, um, the... Although the symbols are opaque to you on the walls, you do kind of recall when um, Dudek, uh, or rather when Gosh, through Dudek, translated them, 
and then it kind of occurs to you that that might actually be more more appropriate than you thought. On the left hand side, it reads, "In your mind, all is conquered," and on the right hand side, it says, "In your heart, all is revealed." And that may actually be the reason why it happened now. Hmm. Fair. Um, but you can, you've, you've made an interesting argument. I will say that you can make the roll. You do not have advantage, but the roll will be softened somewhat, or the difficulty will be softened in your case. Basically, her argument is, is like, oh, now there was, like, what makes you, you think that we, we were now worthy of being spoken to after all of this, all right, of this at right. this point. <laughs> so I'll say difficulty 15 for your role. Okay. For persuasion role. I, I'm not worried about persuasion. Wow, it's okay. a plus 10. Yeah. It's, I no have worries. expertise in persuasion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a, a, a thoughtful pause after you make your argument and, and a sort of, a, a sort of verbal hmm as an inconsideration. Like what, what 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 makes us think that we're worthy of being here? What what makes us worthy of you speaking to us suddenly now after we've been here for like an hour hitting ourselves with walls? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Seems like a convincing argument. Who wants to go next? Hmm. Well, Silas is going to use two charges from the staff to get one of his spell slots back. Okay. Uh, and then he's going to cast Major Image uh, in the middle of the room. And uh, he says, In your heart, all is revealed. He said, this is my heart. And he shows a picture of Molly. Oh, okay. I am searching for her. She is lost somewhere in one of these dimensions. And if coming here to find whatever is here and bring it to the beholder will help that. That is why I'm here. You say, in your mind, all is conquered. And he'll just kind of look at the, the top of the pillar, I guess, as a point to look at. And say, look into my mind. I will not be defeated in this. And he'll also have uh, pictures of Melora and Graveler and Cathron. Because uh, he can do a 20-foot cube. So he'll he'll basically make a uh, array of uh, allies that we have lost. But by far the most important in the scene is Molly. Very cool. I think that's a very convincing argument. I will give you advantage on the persuasion roll. And your DC is 13. Mm, 16. Yep. All right. Good argument so far. Uh, do you need another moment, uh, Medrick, or do you... No, I should be good. Okay. I, okay. I hope so. Like, I have words in my mind, but it's like, are they all going to come up properly? Who knows? Probably not. You don't have to do them in, in character voice if you don't want to. You can describe it. Okay. I'll explain that there was a battle and Melora was lost. And I was supposed to protect her, but I failed to do that. And I am not leaving until I find her. Or at least... Because if she stays there, she's probably going to die, right? Or, I mean, if she stays like in whatever plane she is, she's in. So I'll explain that I need to get to her and bring her back to the real world, or to our world, before she dies. Okay. Seems like a convincing argument. Not uh, not quite as powerful with the additional features as, as Silas is, but you already have advantage. 
Uh, and your I difficulty do? is 15. You have advantage from Annie. Right. Yeah. You Thank tend you. to be the one that who, who fumbles on your words the, the most. Both in real life and in character. <laughs> I kind of imagine that Annie's just sort of chopping, jumping in and throwing a word in here and there to keep him directed. And that's persuasion, right? Persuasion, yeah. yes. There's a 19. And, and also just the hey. fact that both of our arguments were very, like, people we are looking for are focused. Yeah. And we're not here to break shit or steal shit. Or at least I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so 19. Okay. You feel like you've made a very convincing argument. And finally, do deck. I you got this, bro. I haven't lost anyone like they have, but I seek the Argenti Sagex itself. The lost knowledge, the lost wisdom. That's what I hope to find. And if I can help them do what they do, then that's even the better. Uh, middling argument. He's going to have a 15 to get over. Five. There's almost a dismissive sound after Dudek's speech. You have some compelling reasons. I will grant you that. Make it through the gate. And I will speak to you on peaceful terms. But the gate is yours to consider. I will give you right, this well, one thing. For... Sorry, what was that? I was going to say, right, well, thanks for not crushing us. <laughs> I will give you this one thing. I am not... In any place you would find on the material plane, seek me beyond. And good luck. Planeswalking is dangerous. And nothing more is heard. Sorry, he said, find the gate, peaceful terms. He, he's not on the material plane. Planeswalking is dangerous, correct? Yes. Yeah. Now, there's no immediate threats other than the time ticker, which is always a threat. So you could decide if you wanted to potentially see if a short rest might be possible or you can press on you can also ponder what the voice has said discuss it amongst yourselves or maybe even challenge a role or two to see if you can find a little more information that's up to you well, there were oh. more words that said the knowledge is the knowledge blooms and the, the doorway is open so maybe there's another saying that's in another room. I mean, the odds are pretty good that there's two more of these rooms. Maybe one of them has a way to get to a portal. Okay. And everybody's looking kind of rough right now, correct? Yeah. Okay. I mean, we, we could try to take a short rest here. I'd be okay with that. <laughs> I mean, we, we did just have a fight out there and then get bludgeoned by walls, as previously stated. <laughs> that is an interesting way to put it, yes. I mean, it's not wrong. It's not wrong. <laughs> um, so, and I don't want to have to leave anyone behind because of something dumb like running into walls. Walls <laughs> running into us. <laughs> I'm fine, but I'm thinking of everybody else mm. who is, is that... not death, death stress and able to just jump over walls. 
Uh, Silas is, I mean, yeah, if you want, we can take a rest. Uh, I mean, after that, I think we should just go to the room to the left and keep going till we find something because we haven't found whatever it is Reva sent us for. Yep. Yeah, and hopefully the room to the left isn't a bottomless pit. Okay, so are you just taking a moment? Yes, rolling a few hit dice. Okay. Um, Dudek, uh, when sitting down, does kind of form a bit of a, of a lotus position to do some relaxation. Uh, let's see what we got here. Probably spend... That's a pretty good start. I recoil my rope. That's Make sure it's all, all nice before I put it back in the bag of holding. <laughs> oh, it does automatically do that. Okay. Well, <laughs> we might as well take that rod with us. Yes, I was. I was not planning on leaving in it here. Mm. Uh, and then I guess this time we want to head to the. We want to head to this side. So we'll have to. We'll have to be down close to the ground and then pop up after the wall passes over us and leap into the room. Yep. Okay, well. Do you have a theory Silas about the stones yet? I haven't got a clue. That one just oh. sucked up a spell and that's that. Um, so, it, and from your magic site, when I when we put it in any of them, none of them looked different. No, I mean they all have, all the receptacles have divination magic in them, and it has some sort of glow, but it kind of just sucks in magic. Apparently, it's definitely not the same as the other one. Mm -hmm. Can I try uh, putting it into the far right one again? Uh, yep. It does not seem to have an effect. Okay. Yeah, I mean, they don't seem to have anything to do with us moving the room, like spinning the room around. Mm -hmm. I thought maybe we had to collect the ones from each room or something, but the one in the other room did seem to do something. So I don't know. Well, let's go. And I take the, the rod there. Okay. So you're all getting prepared. I will say the difficulty has now lowered because you've done this a couple of times, but there will be a quick dexterity check roll. Um, Still a save. Or save, sorry. Uh, difficulty 13 now. 14. 25. <laughs> 14. Whew. There you go. She's just like, step. Boink. <laughs> it's a little bit more than that, but. Um, oh always one gosh 
Um, I should actually have Gosh would have done some healing because that would be better than where they're at now. Than not healing. <laughs> and not healing. Um, it is still the same massive thunk, though. As I, I have a feeling it's sort of like you're calling out the numbers. All right, on three. One, two, three. And Gosh is kind of like looking over. He's like, wait, is it on three or after three? And Kathunk gets uh, smacked by the, the uh, thing. No. So, oh, no. Uh, it's more. Maybe it's because he only has one eye. Like he lacks death, uh, death perception. <laughs> death perception? Yeah. Um, okay, those that would be. definitely be why. Let's go the other direction. And please ignore anything you see until I've got a chance to move you all over. As all of you step over. Now, all of you except for Gosh are able to step over and then hold up on the thin ridge that lines this room. Gosh kind of leaps over and lands into the water as this room appears to be filled with water. There is some detritus and debris as if something has been broken up here, almost like pieces of, of cargo from a ship. Um, the water seems to be deep and cold. And after a second of sputtering, uh, uh, Gosh pops their head back up. I'll, so, I'll extend my hammer towards him for him to grab it, and I'll, and I'll pull him back. Uh, all right. Easy enough done. Um, around this room, you see, uh, as I said, filled with water. You do see uh, what looks like something moving in the water deep below. There's no real light in this room. There is once more the... Uh, the uh, oh, brain. Uh, the lever is on the or is, is now hovering about ten feet up above the water, uh, and it is on its side, so facing outward from the central pillar. Uh, the central pillar shows two images, which I think you'll be able to see from there. The little ridge that's around allows you to see it. Um, one appears to be of a tall fem feminine figure holding a, uh, what do they call them, amphoras, basically the old, oil, the old uh, jugs, the ancient jugs, and pouring something down upon small people that seem to be rejoicing. Um, one could even make this out to be something like a cloud in the middle, and it comes down to them as rain, but is poured on the top by this figure. Um... The other one is how to describe. At first, it looks like a mountain, but then there's a, 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 a little bit of a deeper cut, and you realize that it must be a pile of ice or snow, the way that it's differentiated from, the behind, from behind it. And also, it goes down to what appears to be a line and extends beyond, beneath the line as well. Beneath that line, there are indications of waves and water moving. And a large serpent-like creature kind of circling around the underwater element of that strange double mountain. Uh, Silas, the serpent, can you uh, make sure he doesn't attack us, if you, can, if you can talk to it? I think that was in the picture, wasn't it? That is in the, the two carved pictures. So oh, Okay, because I thought you central... said there was something like moving. Uh, sorry, I need to move the eye over. Uh, this is in the in the central part where the carved reliefs have been. Gotcha. You do make out a shadow in the water, however, as if uh, uh, something is moving below. Uh, once more, you see on the wall um, a vertical collection of of uh, uh, sconces. I'm losing the words rapidly. I don't know how much longer this is going to go. <laughs> uh, of the sconces My words were crap well. to begin with. <laughs> uh, no sign of any crystal, though, in this room. I bet you it's at the bottom somewhere. Possibly. Do we want to try checking this room in depth? 
first or do we want to try to go to the next room to see if it's more hospitable and then once we know what's in all the rooms we can try to figure out how this whole thing works i mean we would need to get to the other side anyway so i i'm good either way yeah we can oh. avoid having to swim. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. And again, the translation of the walls. Um, the upper parts are familiar. The bottoms are not. Um, in your mind, the doorway is open. In your heart, the knowledge is... Oh, now I can't read it. <laughs> the knowledge blooms, I think. The knowledge blooms, yes. Actually, that's right. You have seen both of those. You've not seen them in this combination before. Nope. So what would you like to do? Do we just move on or do we do we go in the water? Well, I, I prefer to not go in the water. I think we should go to the next room and then we'll know, I mean, at least what the four rooms are. I suspect this is one giant puzzle that maybe leads to something, but we probably have to do stuff in all four rooms first. Yeah. But right now, I still don't know what, I mean, I don't know what the whole sconce thing is about. The ridge you're standing on is only about six inches wide, by the way. Yeah. And Med Medrick is wearing, like, fairly heavy armor. It's not plain armor, but it's, it would still be unpleasant to have to swim. Shimmy, shimmy, well, shimmy. Yeah. Um, the Silas will cast water breathing on everybody. Okay. <clears throat> That'll last for a day. <laughs> Small gills form in everyone's necks. Uh, can someone roll me? As I was like up to my shoulder in, in the bag of holding looking for my pearl. <laughs> <laughs> can someone roll me a d20, please? I can do that. Seven. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I had already pressed a button when you said I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Uh, okay. Okay. Up. Uh... from within the water you have noticed some sort of shadow moving back and forth um, and then it becomes very difficult to see almost as if it itself becomes translucent like it is difficult to see for us to see like in general or it is difficult for us to see the creature the creature okay so as you've all noticed this thing moving around in there suddenly it seems to vanish within the context of the water okay uh, let's see well my blind sight i am i'm like heavily scanning for things i cannot see <laughs> okay each of yeah, you make that's a perception a... check. Um, uh, Annie makes it normally. The everyone else makes it a disadvantage. Oops, wrong thing. Sorry. <laughs> Jeez, nothing. Gets wow. By you okay, guys. so nineteen is at a disadvantage. <laughs> <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, and Annie. Oh, that that hovered over a nat twenty. It like spun oh. on the screen. <laughs> So, so the the one with blind sight is the one that's blind sighted almost, but not quite. Um, none of you are surprised, uh, even uh, Annie, um, when the water swells in front of all of you, and out from under uh, from the water seems to leap into the air and then take form and hover in the air. Weirdly, um, a long serpentine body about four feet long, probably a couple of inches in diameter. Resembles an eel, but looks like an eel made of water. And it kind of glow, floats up a little bit. And you all notice the water level increase slightly uh, as it kind of just, cover, just crests over the ridge. And your feet start to get wet. Um, yeah, it, let's go to the next room, Mill. 
it sort of swims back and forth looking at all of you, um, kind of judging you up and down, if you will. It does not seem to be aggressive yet. The water I'll, like, is up over awkwardly your awkwardly wave. <laughs> um, it kind of floats over in front of you and kind of, kind of looks like it's swimming in midair and kind of shimmers its whole body, kind of mimicking your wave. <laughs> We're going to go now. Hello? I'm, sh- I'm going to shimmy. About a, water's about a foot deep at this point, up over the ridge. Yeah, uh, guys, we need to move. It floats back. Not, not because of the serpent, but... Uh, it, floats it floats back, back and back. kind of hovers in front of Medric. But you see it recoil a little bit from you. Okay. Yeah, it's probably the heat. It's probably the heat. Yeah, Ignis says hi. No hard feelings. <laughs> I take it if you haven't attacked us, you're not here to kill us. Unless it's by drowning us by with all this water. It's about halfway up your legs now. Seems to be wrapped. I'm shimmying. Up. I'm trying to be shimmying this way to me across. Yeah, same. Okay. Um, it's but a Tyler narrow. Is in the way. It's a narrow ledge, so there will be a, an acrobatics test. Um, you're taking your time. There's no pressure at this moment, so it's not a hard test. It's a twelve. Acrobatics. So I have zero. We're rip. Three! I fall in, don't I? <laughs> you fall in, yes. <laughs> Sploosh. Damn it. Blew it all. Oh, no. <laughs> Do I manage to grab the ledge to pull myself back up? Not with a three, no. I mean, sorry. You you can pull your... You can swim over. You're not in any danger. You're not going to drown. Um, okay. The water is filling. You can even feel the water kind of filling rapidly. And what's more, you kind of feel the water solidly swimming around you. Solidly. Uh, as if there's not just one of these, but many. This was the one okay. that came to the surface. Uh, Silas is uh, acrobatics. Uh, Silas is just going to walk into the water. He's got to be over by the, the thing anyways. Um, when you say walk into the water, you mean swim? Uh, well, if it's one foot deep, he'll walk in. If it's more than that, yeah, he can swim. Yeah, there there does not seem to be a floor. Uh, okay, then he'll just uh, drop into floor. the water and swim across. Okay. Uh, it's well, cold. swim over to the thingy. It's cold, but it it uh, it feels like uh, feels like fresh water. It does not have the salty tang of ocean water. Uh, I think probably. Gosh is the most hesitant. And he falls in. And Sploosh. kind of Again. <laughs> um, I think panics a little bit and starts to to uh, slash at the water around him. Um, which the water starts to churn ever more strongly around him. As Medric, you start to think this isn't just water, there are creatures all around you, but you're able to swim. Okay. Um, You're also he, able to breathe. He is able to breathe, but still doesn't like being submerged. Mm. Um, uh, Dudek, can you grab him? I can certainly try. And with Gosh, you'll be fine. You can breathe underwater for a day. Um, and now you can see there are things crawling up around uh, Gosh to try to hold him in. But with Dudek's help, he pops back up to the other side. You are there. The water is now around your waists. What are you going to do? There is no solid platform to stand where the uh, the switch is. Mm-hmm. No, Silas is just going to wait till uh, Annie gets to the locking mechanism, and we can. Well, it's not trick. locked because I have the thing. Oh, I thought. Well, I thought there was another like actual like button thing you had to press. No. So what it was was that previously you have the the two platforms, and then mm-hmm. the immovable rod was lodged like this in between both, so neither of them moved. Yep. But back when so without I, taking each, the emer- each time we've moved these, you've 
unlocked a thing and I've hit the switch. Well, not in... since the first one because the the thing moved. Right. So in the void room, you went to unlock something. There was nothing there to unlock. Oh, okay. So just the switch. Okay. Yeah. Everybody, get ready. I stand ready. Okay. I count us in. We will flippy the switchy. Three, two, one. Okay. Yeah, I'll get my countdown. How are you staying there? Are you going to kneel down in the water somehow on this on this uh, six inch ridge or? Yep. But they might we're, want we're, to. We're going into the other, trying to get into this room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they might want to uh, be off the ridge, just beside it, and pull themselves up when it goes past. Yeah, because keeping in mind, if the pattern yeah. holds, the wall in the lower half on the upper part is what's going to be sweeping by you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so go. Yeah, go in into the water there and pull ourselves up. My brain was the entire time picturing the opposite. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. Um, that's why I ask these questions to hopefully clarify for everyone. I even wrote it down, and for some reason my brain was... <laughs> All right. Um, it is going to be difficult to haul yourself up and through the water and fast enough, so the difficulty will be increased. Um... Oh, right. You're using Mage Hand to flip a switch, aren't you? Yeah. Never mind. I I, I left, lost that one in my head somewhere. I, so, yeah, if I can, if, if I have to hit it physically, I'll, I can hit it physically. Well, you, you, you hit uh, two of them with Mage Hand now, and you know it's strong enough. It, it's mm -hmm. cantilevered, so it's not, uh, not full-on heavy weight to move. Yeah. I mean, he has magical water movement, so he's not slowed down here. Right. Um, probably the rest of you though, um, because now there's about three feet of water above the ridge itself, um, have this weird experience of now you have to hover just below the water line and literally have to launch yourself out. Um, does water breathing give you a swim speed? Okay. Um, so it is going to be very, very close. All right. Once more, everyone make your dexterity saving throws. This time the difficulty is 16. Whew. Made it. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, no. Uh, Dudek did terribly. This is not going to be a good one for you guys. Uh, oh, wow. Did anybody make Oh, no. Uh, uh, Medrick made it, which seems appropriate. <laughs> Medrick is it? <laughs> <laughs> Edric well, has like is... a zero modifier for dexterity. <laughs> when Nick is the one who makes it, nobody does. Yeah. All right. Let's see how badly this hurts. Eight points of bludgeoning damage to each of you. Dunk. So it's a pretty nasty hit as the massive thing sweeps through. But you'll see why in a moment. Uh, I thought it was terribly appropriate that Medric was the one to make it. All right. This... I, I would like to use evasion into? if I can. <laughs> Uh, you can use evasion, yes. Perfect. Uh, Minus goes that time. way. Uh, no, it doesn't. Shoot. There we go. And this one goes this way. And then everybody moves into the next room. And maybe oh, that's it is better. because the room is more along the lines of the affinities that um, Medric has. But yes, indeed, as you move into the next room, um, the room quite literally is on fire. There is flames spouting out from a central depression in the room in which fire and flames are flying upward. Um, it is, uh, uh, you can even hear kind of the geysering, if you will, of flames down below. The room is extraordinarily hot. Um, there is, however, a solid platform, which seems to be about five feet off the ground, which is step standing right beside the switch in this case. Mm -hmm. um, 
and each of you can make a perception check. Perception. Fourteen. Okay. Oof. Don't have much luck. Oh, okay. Um, as you stand there and the flames are washing over you, for you, uh, Medric, it is a sign that no matter where you go, the power of Ignis is still strong and, and bold and beautiful. Uh, it also occurs to you that given all the planar stuff, this is a, as pure a plane for your people as any. Uh, as pure flames uh, burn everything in the room. You do notice, um, I think Medric got the second highest, you do notice, Medric, that there are, are stone steps that seem to go down into the pit. They go down on each side. I didn't have a way to draw that in this one. Um, so it is possible to kind of climb down in there. And in fact... Is there um, a bottom to the pit? Uh, not that you can see from here. Um, okay. The... The stairs kind of wind down and around the outside of the pit into, for as far as you can see, in flames just seem to shoot up from the inside. Um, and Dudek points uh, into the pit. Down there, do you, do you see something sparkling? I'll look again where he's pointing. I'm assuming he's pointing. And he is pointing. He's pointing, but he's also kind of hesitant to get too much closer to this fire. Uh, and right, indeed, so uh, down the stairs about uh, about uh, 25 feet, there does seem to be another one of those gems. Um, it's hard to tell color because everything here is is uh, uh, colored oddly, but it appears to be a uh, greenish blue. Okay. Uh, and I should say that... Do, do, do. And suddenly all of us are dry. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it is the fastest blow dry you've ever had. Um, which level is that on? There we go. And I should say that in the sconces in the back, which you can see, there is a reddish stone, which is in the third place. On the walls now, you can see in your mind, all is conquered. In your heart, all is revealed, which you've seen before. I think the one that we're missing is the top one. It is the other top one, because we've only seen uh, in your mind, in your heart. Yeah. On the top. Uh, you've seen yeah, all is conquered, all is revealed, because that was the that was when the inverse case when you were down at the bottom that, that uh, seemed to reveal you to whoever the defender is. Yes, but what I'm saying is that the... If, oh, I see what you mean. Sorry. If yes. it's shape, shape words, shape words. Right. You've seen mostly words. Oh, yeah. So, so we've seen all of the bottom words, but we're missing the second set of top words. Yeah, because we're traveling with them. Yeah. So I'm um, guessing the blue, the greenish blue gem should have been in the water room. Yeah, I'll, uh, go get There's a, a greenish blue gem somewhere? Yeah, it's on the floor, 25 feet below. Or at least I'm assuming it's on the floor. <laughs> so it's on the stairs. Will... Okay. So I just will right. wander over as close as he dares and try to mage hand it out. Uh, when you get to the edge of the stairs and barely even, even able to look down, you already feel the heat of this. Yep. Uh, it is like walking into a furnace. You feel like if you go any further, like to look down over the edge... Uh, <laughs> you'll, you'll probably have uh, a considerable problem standing there for any length of time. Even Dudek, who went, hey, what's that, dashed in and dashed out at the same time. He didn't stay more than a half second. Yep. This is going to hurt, but yeah. He'll take a look I over mean, the edge and try I, to whip could, the stone could, back up here. No, I, I can go get it. Or Mr. Fire guy? Yeah. Sure. Are Mr. you fire. immune to fire or resistant to fire? Resistant. Because that might hurt. But if you want to do it, I'll act as backup. Where is thing? 
Can't find it. Oh, here it is. And can somebody roll me a d20, please? I got this. I do this all the time. So I will run down the stairs, pick up the gem, and run back. Okay. Um. This cleric's on fire. <laughs> all right. It is very, very hot. And yes. you are resistant, but you're not... Uh, uh, not immune, no. At least not, not yet. Not immune, not yet. Uh, however, the faith of uh, Ignis burns through your veins, and any flame that flows over you is both comforting and powerful. However, um, you take four points of fire damage Great. as you run down, grab onto the stone, which is surprisingly cool. It is not hot, despite that. Um, and in the central pillar of fire, which you can now see as you kind of glance a little bit towards the edge, you can mm -hmm. now see it as a continuous pill of fire, as, a pillar of fire as far as you can see. Little um, elements of the flame are dancing in and out of the fire in multiple directions, um, some of which seems like it's going counter to the normal movement of flame. And in fact, a whirlwind forms in the center of the flame right near you. Uh, a vortex of flame on level with you. Okay. And takes coherence. What does it say? Or what does it do? Um, it has a... It kind of separates off from the main column and moves closer to you as if to inspect you. There is no it... humanoid face or body but merely this, this flying, floating thing. And actually, in the crackling of the fire, uh, you hear it speak in Ignan. Okay. Um, which I think you do understand. I think I did add that to your character yep. sheet. Um, what brings you here, fire brother? I'm looking for a friend. And my friends are looking for knowledge, and also their friends, and our friends. I could be your friend. Well, you are my friend if you're a Vignus. Hooray. I have a friend. Long as it doesn't want hugs. Yeah. <laughs> you can feel the heat from this thing even being about, about five feet away. Um, you can feel like... You? you can feel like the... the your clothing starting to have actually it's perfectly dry already because of the just entering into this room. Yeah. Um, but you feel like anything that you have, which might be flammable is starting to crisp a little bit just from being close to it. Yeah. I need to go back upstairs, but, uh, who are you? I, I have no name. You can name me. Will you name me? You will be called Crispy. I am Crispy. I am an elder spark. It's I nice have lived you. for minutes. Medric is the the master of names. <laughs> we have Graveler, we have Crispy. It's good to meet you, Crispy, but uh, I have to get going, but there's a good chance I might be back. Don't leave me so soon. You've named me. Oh, yes. Now you have a name. I will follow. All right, uh, but my friends are not Ignians, so try not to go, try not to go too close to them, because you can, the heat you radiate can hurt them. Of course. That is so the I'll point of heat. No, not necessarily. Heat can help, but heat, heat can also hurt. Crispy will help. You have to know. 
Well, right. going down to get that, can I take a look at the pictogram? <laughs> so uh, I'll walk up slowly. I have a friend, guys. <laughs> so the pictogram in this case appears to be a an exploding volcano is the left-hand one. Um, and the right-hand one, it takes you a moment to kind of figure out what they're depicting, but then you realize it is a, a group of people gathered around a campfire. But what you're really seeing are the shadows that the large campfire, the bonfire almost, is is casting on everything. And very quickly... Medrick makes his way back up the stairs, the sort of winding stairs. And probably to everyone else's alarm, probably not Annie, she's busy, but the flame seems to follow Medrick uh, in the form of the swirling vortex. And when he comes to the very top of the stairs, the swirling vortex detaches from the central column of flame uh, and um, sort of hovers somewhat eagerly just behind Medric's shoulder. Medric, you can still feel that that warmth just over your shoulder. Nice. Um, in in total, it's very, very small as in very narrow, but very long, and literally just looks like a, a spinning vortex of fire. Nice. Hey, uh, this is Crispy. They're an Elder Spark. I am fire. I, I, I turn around and suddenly there's fire there. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, the voice comes from somewhere in the flames, and if you don't understand Ignan, you have no idea what it's saying. But it seems to be speaking very enthusiastically. You can get the tone of it. I am fire. I will burn said, everything. Well, not everything. Not everything. Um, it has to be a balance. Balance? Um, if, yeah, if you don't you, want to destroy everything. If you want that to come with us, um, I don't think that's really an option if we have to go back through the water room. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Crap. Uh, so the next room is all water, so if you go into it, you're probably going to die. I can defeat water. Water is the natural enemy. No, oh, but you can't. Well, water is necessary for life, too, you know. I live. I have no water. Yeah, is, um, Medrick is regretting his decisions. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine, if you will, uh, Medrick, it is like you've got a an overexcited puppy. Yes. I was thinking like... fire. A smarter than an average toddler, but... <laughs> yeah, somewhere in there. Excited puppy works. But it kind of hovers just behind your shoulder respectfully okay. although it, for everyone else the the heat of the room is so much you don't necessarily notice the heat of this this uh fire elemental but uh you get the feeling that it would probably hurt the entire room is water is what i'm saying then it will be a hard fight i won't need to care, call my brothers we will conquer the water yeah, where did you say you were from again fire and your brothers are, are they all here right now no or could they be okay i found a path and i came i found you the path where is this good. path beyond the flame it was narrow small strange shaped oddly Uh, when when I when I spoke with uh, Melora by ascending, was there a fire in the plane she was in? Because I remember it being described as, as some sort of like one of the hells, but I forget if there was fire or not. Uh, not especially fire, no. Okay. No, I think it's in the place we were stuck for a year. Right, right. In the other oh, game. Oh, oh, the shadow, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the players would know it as the shadow. You guys don't really. You had no. gotten actually that name, I think, before, but. Wouldn't necessarily know what it is. Uh, while Annie's looking at the pictograms and uh, Medrick is making a friend, um, 
Stylus is going to move over to that spot because it puts the sconces just within 30 feet. And okay. he's going to use Mage Hand to try to move the redstone between them until something looks like it works. Okay. So kind of like... Yep. Um, I have cat aggro. <laughs> Okay, everyone else can make everyone can make a perception check as you're doing this. I should go into skills and not inventory. I mean, if your machines can do things for you instead, ten. All right. I'm assuming a ten is not enough. I, I, I feel like uh, Medric that's a is, performance. Oh yeah. Oh. I feel like Medric is is, if you will, consumed by his new companion for the moment. <laughs> but I'm just... Um. Okay, and Marie can kind of verify, uh, or sorry, Annie can verify uh, Silas's perception. It's hard to tell. This room is extraordinarily bright. Uh, this, yeah, you know, the last room was kind of muted uh, color from or light from somewhere. This one is extraordinarily bright. But as you're moving them back and forth and kind of trying to figure out if there's anything between you and Annie, uh, Silas, you do realize that moving it anywhere except for the spot it is right now, the pillar of flame is slightly less. Uh, vigorous. Okay, so it's where it should be. Um, so it at least has an effect in the room, but that's the only effect you notice. Yeah, if the only, if yeah, if the current spot's the only one where there's any difference, then yeah, he'll just leave it there. Okay. Um, Stylus will look over at Annie. Whatever this place does, I think we need to place that blue green gem in the water room and then maybe that'll be enough that one of the sconces can trigger in the first room mm -hmm. like this place is just a giant puzzle yeah i'm trying to think because Part of me wonders if the one that absorbs magic from what you guys are saying mm. might belong in the room that might be the, referring to the void. But yeah. there was something that happened with that one when we put it into a specific spot. Yeah. Uh, Mark, which one was a... No, never mind. That wouldn't be needed. Hmm. Yeah, like when, when we moved one to a slot there, it... it seem to do to something glow. so yeah maybe if we put a third one here the other stone will stop sucking <laughs> maybe <laughs> so we need to go back through to yeah. the room beside us yeah back to the water room and then back to the earth room yeah we have reached six o'clock, which was our, our planned stopping point. Um, any last Birdie minute questions? Seems to be sleeping, so. <laughs> any last minute questions before we, we uh, call this to an end? You've got a, a, a plan ahead of you. You've uh, I will say you've mm -hmm. seen all four quarters of this. You have some notion We're that just missing... the, the crystals are important, but for what, you're not quite sure. Um, and We're missing one of the word sections yeah right so there's still a little so bit we're... more to 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 explore yeah but um shall we bring this this evening to a close works for me yeah might as well the only question i had is like why sure. would some idiot like throw the stones in the wrong rooms but that's like a plot reason and i'm assuming you will answer <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> well yeah, there there is an answer, but it's not something you would have discovered from what you've seen so far. Um, actually, the, uh, you're the one person who might have a clue uh, because there was a notion that the voice challenged you and mm -hmm. and wanted to, so, to prove yourselves worthy. That implies that others have been challenged and did not prove worthy. Oh, okay. Um, and given the effects that this place has there would be nothing left of them one way or the other. 
Um, so you may be picking up after someone else failed. Good to know. Well, We're not starting with a blank slate. That's right. Nobody reset the puzzle before you came in. Doggone it. So I hope you guys have had fun with this strange little puzzle thing, the little experiment with Roll20's uh, uh, um, lighting as well as uh, using rotating segments. <laughs> Honestly, it was a weird idea that I was going to do on paper, and then I realized I could actually do this in Roll20, but it would be it would be better than me holding up a piece of paper and just showing you, oh, this is what it looks like yeah. now. Uh, or doing it all theater of the mind, which I thought was going to be nuts. Oh, yeah. It's what uh, Roll20 is for. It, it, it's yeah, it's, it's supposed to, job. It's supposed to do the things. Uh, well, uh, I want to thank uh, all of my players for joining me today and thank anyone who might be watching. You could be watching... For example, on Twitch, uh, just about every couple of weeks, we uh, find ourselves on Twitch at 3 o'clock uh, Atlantic Standard Time um, on Sundays. Next one will be in two weeks. It'll be, uh, it'll be May. Can you imagine? It'll be May. What? Um, you can also find the recordings of these put up on YouTube. Go to youtube.com slash ENCAF1. Look for the Legends of the Drowned Isles or the Campaign 2, the Great Confusion Playlists. And also twitch.tv slash ENCAF1. You can also find summaries of the episodes on the Facebook page, Watchers of the Drowned Dials. Uh, and you could uh, join in and see what uh, uh, see what questions you might ask and what answers we might offer. But, and I would like to thank the person that is not me who was watching. Well, hey, <laughs> thanks a lot for watching. There, there is a second person. That means that, thanks for... so there's someone that is not me. <laughs> that's, that's, that's awesome. And thanks to the DM for running. Yes. It is my pleasure to run you through mm -hmm. these strange sorts of things, and hopefully it all becomes slightly more clear each time we go through a session and you end up with some weird lore dumps. Uh, thanks very much to my players for uh, for digging into this stuff. Thanks to the cats out there for being distracting and uh, yes. also cute very and much. at the same time. All right, folks. Uh, uh, thank you very much for, for watching. See you guys next time. Bye.